Good evening or good night, more accurately, uh, free enterprise community, or perhaps good early morning if you're in Europe, good afternoon if you're over on the other side of the world, Australia, Asia, anywhere like that, and welcome to the Adam and Cup group round race that we have going on for you tonight here in the Ninja Shirt group between Dishmu and Sheep Launcher, both at zero and two, looking to try and uh, take their first win of the tournament, and only one of them can leave with it, so uh, it's definitely going to be a good race either way. Joining me on the restream tonight are our restreamer Xenocat, our tracker Judge Joe, and my co-commentator tonight, Deathlike. Deathlike, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I mean, late late game for US, at least in the East Coast. But uh any any race is a good race. I, I would I would obviously prefer a jet seat given that it's late for me, but I'm just I'm good enough I'm good for a trash fire seed that will be memorable just as well. Yeah, we got a lot of, uh, well, I haven't quite seen all the objectives, of course, because uh, we are uh, currently in meme renaming time, very, very important time for getting through any seed. Uh, only really saw three of them so far, that uh, forge objective, which I always like seeing in these flags, because it means you're going to have two of those terminal key items. We're probably in for quite a hunt today. Yeah, but given that we're doing a completionist type of uh, race, I um, mean, you're probably going to get them. It's it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So um, having Excal is great uh, late game uh, burr for a uh, wonderful paladin or a dart for the unleashed ninja that is <laughs> that is this that is uh, available much earlier than usual, and I am I'm all for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm kind of in this weird space with these flags, sort of looking at objectives where jet seeds look very different on these flags. Jet seeds still are, you know, you're still hitting 10 key items on most of them. And I really like the sort of uh, moment that that brings when people start to realize they might have to actually do a level grind if they didn't plan on doing it. They might actually have to try and, you know, figure out a more difficult Z fight than just you grab an anchor, have three Adam and armors and go through. And so it'll be very interesting to see if the seed's gonna be nice to them, just sort of let them cruise through it, or if it's going to be pedal to the metal from the start and just make it difficult to sort of uh, really flex their skill on for their two runners tonight. Uh, it depends. I think if, if, if you see more moon objectives, um, you're probably going to get your key items on the moon and do your grind on the moon as as a consequence. Uh, when you see more, if you if there's like no moon objectives, like you, not even a you know giant a giant uh, objective, which what, what ends up happening is you're um, you're kind of you're you're just guessing. You're, you're for at least on uh, for, uh, for me, um, I think learning rolling enough of these and uh, that you. You're probably going to have at least one one key item, guaranteed one key item on the moon. That's just, that's just the way how it rolls. You don't don't like don't be don't be excited when you see everything uh, looks like. Hey, I don't have to do the moon. Oh, you're going to do the moon. And on on a good on a good seed roll, you're going to get it. And I and I see both Edwards. So I uh, even though it, that's Edge's uh, actual original name, but uh, yeah, uh, that I it's a good sign when. Uh, when you at least have the ninja available early on. Definitely, that'll give them a good deal of early power in order to get through there. No key item starts, so we are going to see Dishmu head right on over to Troy, and it looks like Sheep Launcher might be following right in suit to try and get that second try at it. Meanwhile, we saw the rest of those objectives now, and we see the only moon objective that we actually have to deal with is going to be that Cave Bahamut objective, that seventh objective on there, so that's potentially quite interesting. But a magma key start is also quite exciting to see. Yeah, I think that that's a signal to go do, just go, go, go down in the underground. Well, I'll, you probably will still need to pick up a few uh, J items on the way while while you're at it. But uh, you want having the underground early access means that you you want to do something similar to a um, you want you want to kind of do the like say uh, Fame March checks. Just get get the free key item, find your uh, find the monster chests, and you get full reign of some good loot. 
on top of you can and you can ch and you probably want to plan ahead by checking all the shops available to you so you can know which what you uh, will have access to i mean having knowing full well what the weapons particularly weapons uh on this flag set uh will allow you to plan plan your shopping as needed uh edge edge benefits most if you can if you get a long sword or a full moon boomerang or even a mute knife it's good enough uh but that uh if you can get ninja blades uh you're gonna you're gonna spend you're gonna uh gonna toss just toss the whole farm you're gonna you're gonna sell everything get and go buy ninja blades for that edge definitely it is very interesting to me in these flags where it seems like we talk a lot about how the adamant armor you know whoever finds the adamant armor first tends to have a pretty large advantage but i think one of the sort of unsung things about these flags we have such a high completion rate is that a lot of those sort of early mid-game weapons, like you mentioned, the Mute Knife and like that, actually, as long as the seed lines up for it, can really carry you through so much of that early game that you really can't take any one of these items that our runners are picking up right now for granted. Nothing really too exciting on either side found yet, but hopefully we'll start hitting some of these really interesting items soon. Yeah, um, looks a bit interesting. Dishmu going for the uh, uh, the Damsium, Damsium uh, Treasury, uh, which is fairly good loot if you if you have a, like an early hook. I mean, you can route that in. Should, but I uh, I mean, not. Uh, I mean, I've I think uh, um, early game. I would I, I like the cho like the kind of a Toya Treasury uh, check is uh, like the not the like the locked the non locked portion is just as good so i don't uh, it's a it's an interesting choice uh, I, and uh i think it and if 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 it get if that's some something i don't think it did but um it could be valuable and in the oh and see and part of the part of having the magma key you 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 do get to do the uh the job dwarf check because because that that validates every seed uh not doing it uh will shame on you Definitely, we are seeing that he is a busboy, very important, keeping that sort of uh, Tamra Treasury Plus restaurant open. Uh, very, very much the unsung hero of food service, more or less, uh, the busboy. What is interesting to me is that we are seeing Dishmo doing a lot more of this overworld here. Gonna head up Mount Hobbs and check that character early on. And that is a blue robe, meaning that we're going to find out very, very soon what's in that Baron Castle check. And that it looks like an alt gauntlet, so it is a water hag at the Vigan spot. That's and that well, yes, that's a, that's a good, that's, it's a fun early. Uh, this is, I mean, the the grind here isn't that great, but a uh, hey, you get Kane a little bit quicker to being online. That uh, it, you're not worried because Edge anchoring and you're. And Edge will pretty much blaze through the seed, uh, likely, likely consume all the, the initial ninja magic uh, for five, four of the five, five match uh, battles, as that should be more than enough most of the time. I think probably won't use, probably don't use it when the spirits or souls show up. That that tend to be, I don't remember the exact uh, when they show up, but like like these, you probably want to skip it, but because you're gonna heal, you're essentially gonna. Uh, Essentially, not damage the spirits. Say, and you and you will have to definitely do a manual uh, sm smashing with a uh, cane, whatever weapon he gets. Maybe even spear, spear. I don't even know what he started with. It probably doesn't matter. Speaking of cane weapons that do matter, though, over on Sheep Launcher's side, looting his way down the uh, Fey March here, finding a white spear in that treasure chest. He obviously doesn't know it yet. Has not gone to Mount Hobbs, but will have a cane to use that and an Avenger as well. So, Dishmu finding the cane up here on Mount Hobbs, Sheep Launcher finding all the fun toys for Kane to swing around once he goes back above ground and tries to find it. And I think, you know, there was a bit in my mind where I was like, I don't know if I would necessarily sit through a gauntlet for Kane right away. But I think on Sheep Launcher's side, you know, obviously Dishmu is going for it, but now that Sheep Launcher has that, he's going to want that cane no matter what. Yeah, when I see Avenger, the cape is already in the party. Uh, there's a peak of uh, some some sparkle and dolls. Dolls being the easy should be the easier of the of the two. Uh, if it's 
I mean, the worst that could be, whatever, whatever it's the sparkle is, uh, not interested. Probably not so interested. I think the, especially with the, with the um, early, uh, especially with, uh, especially uh, do, um, getting all the treasure in Fey March, it, it's, you can see what you're gonna build pretty quickly, and it's, uh, it, Kane is gonna be happy. I, when I, if I don't see an Avenger, a Kane is not. Uh, especially when you have the, when you have the magma keep this early, it's like uh, it's. Uh, uh, I, I have I have better ideas. I may I may even consider like a Yang in that spot. But like, obviously, Cecil will be better. But like if depending on who you get, uh, this is a you're probably gonna keep Kane mostly. And this is a free map free battle. If there's a offensive J item, uh, I guess uh, not worth it. I, we set out and she launcher resets out of that yeah not i i think he was just trying to sort of get a couple of free things out of the self cave here probably wasn't too interested in the trap chest there regardless at that point in time so just gonna keep walking down at this point uh Dishu is through that alt gauntlet is gonna have the cane in this party and is looking like he's gonna stay on the overworld do that antlion cave maybe looking for a pan before he heads underground I think I think uh, I think uh, get trying to have the mythical pen before before having to like double to do essentially effectively a double dip and at worst case triple dip for wool. like it's one of those you're gonna be at for bull at least at least once uh, sometimes I don't think people I think you can shave it off shave off if, especially when you have um, early magma key access like early underground access you want to kind of do a uh, scythe cave just get just uh, you know, uh, con make contact with Yang and then do the Sheila check. At least then it becomes a mandatory double dip at most, which is the is which Sheep Launcher is taking full advantage of. Definitely, Dishmu on his way down this antlion cave has found a gun near in one of the chests, so that'll be a good early weapon for Kane. Uh, depending on whether or not he checks the Fey March chests on the way down, once he eventually gets there, we'll find a white sphere and then we'll definitely find the Avenger down at the end. So. That is going to mitigate some of the advantages that Sheep Launcher might have had from all that looting. It won't quite erase them, but it will uh, lower them. But it does look like Sheep Launcher is going to head into this football check now he's back above ground and at least give us a peek at Sheila One. Yeah, I think I think the Gunnir. I know I know that it's the quote, quote, fourth strongest spear, but be, to be frank, it's you're most you're like. 80 90 percent there on Kane uh, uh, Kane straight offense I mean obviously Avenger is is the breaking point you because that that makes that kind of makes decisions much easier uh, and then we're getting a Bahamut at um, at Antlion spot and a Ruby at an early Ruby at Fabul which uh, at this with this Ruby you can pr could probably be taken care of pretty quickly and won't be uh, won't be and oh a vanilla sand ruby so hey free character check um hope uh hope it's uh the one you're, uh, that's hope's kind of like a christmas present hope it's the character you're looking for i think in this case where we know that we're gonna have an excalibur by the end of the seed you're probably hoping to see cecil here i mean obviously cecil and foo are kind of the big ticket characters that's why they're not even showing up when we get to bracket time they get to take a vacation after next week and the uh, play in week but um it's really, really, really interesting to me what this opens up, because that means that Dishmu is going to already have a full party available. I did not quite catch what that was over in the Fabul check, though. That was a Darkness Crystal, apparently. That is very spicy. Sheep Launcher has the entire world open to him at this point. So what might happen uh, when Sheep Launcher gets the Sand Ruby, if, 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 if Antline is even done um the you're more likely going to check the moon character and then see maybe peak uh what is it cave value uh but to at least check check for the get the character there instead of here and it looks like Dishmu finds a dkc because you know uh you know dark knights uh, also take naps too so yeah um i think this is certainly a, certainly a, val val a valuable check um that mean that just means hey uh, uh, monarch deals is definitely on the table and sheep launcher is actually going to shave a few seconds off once he gets down to the antlion cave as well finding exits in that football shop one of the sort of underrated prior to this tournament items where you don't necessarily have access to a character with exit a lot of the time due to the 
max party size due to just not finding a good character with it early on anyways. So that's going to be helpful when he decides to go underground, but it does look like you're not underground over to Antlion, uh, but it's going to head straight to the moon here. Meanwhile, the big question to me is you, on Sheeplauncher's uh, side, end up having a Avenger and a White Spear. You can just pop that Avenger on that Cecil if you want once he eventually gets there and have that White Spear on the cane and still be swinging pretty hard without finding anything else yet. Yeah, I mean, we're def I mean, when right when Cecil is do is the is the guy the go to guy, so Kane will probably lose out on the Avenger in, uh, until well, yeah, definitely will lose out on the Avenger unless hey, we just found uh, we found a light sword, so I get so I guess that that'll be the weapon of choice on top of the Avenger that eventually will be picked up, but uh, not so not quite so yet. Uh, do, we are going to the moon because yes, moon moon character free character check. Might as well do it now. I'll also take a look at the shop, see if there's anything worth buying. Hopefully a siren, or uh, even um, or given that this is already being berserk heavy. Oh, there's Blark. Um, well, you want you want the, you uh, the Bacchus wine is very valuable, and and you will sp you will definitely spend the money. It's even more money, probably. I mean, maybe for me, like say three per character, per berserker, and that would be that would be cover should cover most of uh, the matches that you'll desperately take advantage in certain battles. Like even even in um uh, even in Blark, where you you probably use a Starveil, it the the Bacchus one goes through the wall, doesn't ignores the wall, so that which you can't do with the, the spell, the uh, with Berserk. So, some things you might you would consider doing if, uh, given what you've uh, given, uh, what you've see, what's, what's seen so far. Definitely, we're gonna see a Kainatso here on the back side of uh, Mount Ordeals here. Not necessarily the best thing to find, but should still be fine. Uh, meanwhile, a Lunar Quorum over on Sheep Launcher's side, that's going to be a pretty nice early pickup. I'm always happy to see a White Mage. The question on my mind is, and it looks like Sheep Launcher is going to go to it, is he going to go peak Cave Value? See if he can find a free boss down there, or at least know what he's going to be up against once he gets here, and it looks like he's going to drop the save outside, outside and just go ahead and sink that time down to walk down to the bottom and see what we got for a boss. Yeah, the... the... You definitely want to peek sometimes, uh, you, and the treasure, the loot. Uh, I think the ones usually on the way are probably warm worthwhile. Uh, it's kind. I don't. I don't think that's weighted that well, but it's, it's whatever. I mean, you're you're already here. You might as well. I mean, you get a dragon whip. I mean, if you get a ride, yeah. I don't. I don't think that that all the switch happened, but it's still money in the bank. I mean, things things you don't use, you can still sell. They at least there is value. Uh, darkness arrows not so interesting. Whoa, oh, there, there's your uh, that's your automated ride that gets online if you wanted her. But there's an Azura, so you're going to plan for buying a mute knight for that edge. If so, maybe some some additional shopping might be had to get just even if you're not if you don't find it, you're going to buy it, and it's going to be worth worth your time. Definitely, it's not the most difficult fight, but it is definitely beyond our capabilities at the moment. Meanwhile, Dishmu going to be heading into the CPU fight here at the top of Mount Ordeals, and uh, it should be fine. Yeah, CP uh, CPU, I mean, you have a thousand HP, sh which is where it's shared well, amongst three uh, targets. Uh, CPU, well, you already, I mean, you have the J items, you might as well consume an ore. They just become sellable fodder that you'll that you want um still they uh, just because they look like they're floating doesn't mean they're actually floating if you if a target is actually weak to arrows as, as if you when you scan them with peep that means um then they're immune to quake so uh just because they look like they're floating doesn't mean they are Exactly. They're not floating, they are hovering, and there is a very important difference there as opposed to, say, Mylon Z, who is flying, which is why he shows up later in the game, despite falling off a bridge. Very, very, very important distinctions to make there, uh, as always. Meanwhile, Sheep Launcher is here at Mount Ordeal, is going to head up, going to find that Wyvern, Kainatso, and uh, 
CPU dish move back on the way down. This is a pretty interesting divergence in routes so far. They keep meeting up at strange places. Yeah, I, I, think, I mean, we, again, a lot of it's been always been said before, but the order in which you do things definitely <laughs> determine how the outcome, or at least the decision making. So, I mean, with Chief Launcher not doing antline, he might, might not even get, get, get do ant, um, the antline spot to get the sand ruby to get Cecil. Maybe Cecil comes in later in the seat. So, sometime, so right now, in terms of power, in terms of equipment power, Sheep Launcher has a, a, a greater advantage, while Dishmu has the character advantage. So, we'll see, we'll see how that uh, pans out. I think the early pour on the moon probably disappointing but if you don't get a white a white mage anywhere else that forum becomes much more valuable later on yeah definitely i think what's interesting to me is in a lot of races i've watched throughout this tournament there's been a very very high precedence placed by one runner or the other at very least on castle eblin and neither of our runners seem to have uh decided to go that route um, I'm wondering if they might consider going there later, just because you have that Cecil in your party, you've got those three relatively good cracks at finding a good sword for him early on, and a relatively good chance of finding an adamant armor as well. Uh, there is a temptation there if I'm in their shoes to gamble. Whether or not either of our runners will is another question, but uh, Dishmu is going to go ahead and check these uh, dwarf castles right uh, shops right now and find sirens, which very very important to pick up early on. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, when you're looking for the underground, you are looking for the tier five items, uh, sirens, uh, Bacchus wine, uh, and maybe coffins. Okay, okay coffins not as valuable, but okay for the for certain free frights, you like. And maybe for the occasional grind, a coffin is pretty effective, especially especially on a uh, on a egg grind, um, on on a lot of the free bosses uh, like uh, the officer soldier, baron guards. They're just, they're littered throughout the seed, so there there will be a time if you need to buy one, it will be valuable, and that one will save you quite a bit of time in some of those in some of those uh, fights. Speaking of valuable, Dishmu probably wishing he'd found some more valuable things to sell at this point. Finding ninja swords here in the Ebl or the Dwarf Castle weapon shop, going to not grab either of them. I don't believe he has the funds, and just going to have to head out and just sort of keep a mental note that if he does not have any better weapons for Edge later on the seed, there's your starter kit for him to at least get him rolling. Oh, I see. Okay, so the top, the top of a. Uh... Mount Ordeals is a charm rod, so for a mage that does not exist, a black mage does not exist yet. That's well, I, still worth it for the for the future Cecil. On uh, at least for Sheep Launcher, doesn't know it yet. There is a paladin, there's Cecil. So right now, not val not so valuable. I mean, you do right now. It's kind of the grind for your uh, really the grind for your other characters. Uh, though it didn't look like any XP was gotten on Porum or. Not probably not so much on Edward. So uh, don't, maybe I think the the lack of the Mount Hobbs check is right now probably looming. I mean the king well, the king will be online, but we'll see where uh, Sheep uh, picks up the fourth character, and we'll, and the decisions from that will certainly change the uh, routing. Ideally, you would like to get your like um, Mount Hobbs is a solid. Uh, uh, check for getting a character, but something like the Baron Inn becomes more tempting because you're getting the character and the key item, but you're also doing two boss fights. So still, well, still strong enough to take take that on. But uh, it's you know sometimes you can skip hops because hey, you got your Dark Crystal early. Good time to good time to get a free character that doesn't require any extra intervention. Yeah, I'm kind of back and forth on it a little bit over on Sheep Launcher's side on whether or not he would think it's a good idea to go over there at this point in time because you don't have any aoe if he lands there and sees an alt gauntlet is he necessarily gonna sit through it i think you kind of sit through it if you see a cane there with an avenger and a white spear sitting around 
but you could just maybe try Baron in. You might as well take a look and see who's there. It's kind of, it's it's a really interesting situation where we're in on Sheep Launcher's side where I don't really know what his next move is gonna be because he has many different options and it's all gonna be down to what he decides is the best idea. I don't think any of them is necessarily better than the other at this point, outside of what we already know from our position actually watching it right i think i mean if i mean given the situation what well, why go to mount hobbs when you can get the character elsewhere so i mean the, the care i mean getting a character is great but if you if it's probably you would if you, if you do mount hobbs it's because you don't like what you've ha have so far not so it looks like uh well, looks like sheep Lasher is going to mount hobbs will see see the cane and probably will at least if if uh, not interested, probably reset. If the uh, if realizing uh, is it worth keeping that cane? And you know, and has the Avenger has the white spear. I don't think that was I don't think that was sold in the shopping ship. So my it's like probably will keep, but want to check first at least who what's there and now verified it's all gone. So so yep, we're going to keep the cane. Definitely. Dishmu was looking through his inventory. I think he was looking to see if he had an hourglass to throw at that Calcabrina there. Uh, did not have anything to deal with that yet, but there is a temptation when you see a free boss down at the Fame Arch to want to come back to it earlier rather than later. We'll see if either of our runners end up going that route. We're in pretty good shape for gear right now as far as things are going. On Dishmu's side and Presumably soon on the Sheep Launcher side, and if you picked up the chest, we have the Light Sword, we have a Avenger, we have an Assassin Dagger, we have a White Spear. We're in pretty good shape right now to get through a very large portion of the seed. I'm really excited to see where this leads, because I think the next real big thing is going to be who goes to Baron in first. Yeah, um... We know I mean, we know the darkness axis is at Fabul, so and we have we basically have full over, over reign of the overworld. The question, the real question is, is where, uh, what key I just kind of kind of imagine what where could the key items be? Where and I think probably worth like kind of guess kind of gambling on uh, you know where are the where are the key items for the the objectives that that are mandatory for the seed. I mean, there, and there are just so quite a bit of a, quite a bit when, when you just go through the list. I mean, there's only and there um, even though the giant Babel and K Bahamut are shared, but that's I think I'm counting seven key objectives at least, and that's key items, and that's that's quite a lot. So I think I probably do a kind of a maybe a slow systematic key item check just the. For, just so if, if, if it has a key item, it's going to be done. Uh, probably try to do defer some of the checks if there aren't are no key, it, uh, key items like or try or try when there's a key item requirement, like say tower. If you don't have the tower key, you're probably not going to do keyless tower unless you have nothing if you have nothing else on on the overworld to do until before uh, exploring the moon. Yeah, definitely. We are seeing some very interesting maneuvers over here on Dishmu's side. It was looking like he was interested in trying out that Dwarf Castle check, siding against it in the end. Maybe gonna go over, yep, pop a few eggs early on and get that little bit of an XP advantage. I really like this play as long as he can get down these eggs fairly quickly, because... Again, we've talked so much throughout this tournament about how these early checks and early things you find really sort of ripple throughout the seed and make a long difference in the end. Getting levels early is part of that, too. If you can get through that, like he's getting with this edge with the Assassin Dagger, that's going to give him such a huge chunk of XP to start his seed off. That might make up any time he might have lost with his early routing with Sheep Launcher, just getting all that item advantage early on. Yeah, I think. I mean, right now the uh, Dishmu's party is essentially um, berserker heavy, which means which we're going at, at this point. It, I mean, you want power overwhelming at that point. And um, though the but though some of the benefits are lost without not having a dedicated white mage. Like you, there will be some. Uh, there might be some moon bosses like a, like like a nasty Ogopogo, or or um. 
Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, Mr. Ha uh, our favorite, uh, laughing man, Golbez. I mean, those, there are, there are some going to be some instances where there, that's going to be different. And right now, and also we have, there is, uh, right so far, uh, we haven't really found the, uh, Dishmu hasn't really have an anchor. They're, they're all gaining levels, so they're gonna ha they're ha gonna has have to be an uh, anchor replacement. And Dishmu just decided, hey, I will like to tangle with the DK the DKC boss, and which I don't I don't think it's gonna it's gonna not. It's, I mean, you'll probably survive, but wonder but wondering what's behind that is gonna be the uh, the, the question of the day. Yeah, it's very interesting because Dishmu was thinking, I, I can almost guarantee thinking, you know, I can take this. I have a lot of raw power right now. I have a light sword. I have a white spear. I have an Avenger. I can preserve one or the other and just get through this. Uh, DKC, you don't, you don't do that with DKC. You gotta sit through it. You've gotta get through the actual damage it's putting out, and then you have to fight another boss once that's through with as much healing as you can get in between that third wave and the fight actually ending when he gives his speech about how justice is not the only right in the world for anything else there's mastercard so we'll see what is at the second spot here but this could be a potentially dangerous situation he's in pretty good shape though yeah unless there's like say an ogo behind it and then um, might be very <laughs> could be very spicy we'll take we'll take a look looks like sheep launcher is deciding is going for, going for the sand ruby check, which will net the seesaw everyone is looking for. That's what I mean. This is I mean, that's that. It's the time shine. Oh, it's just a leviathan. Not so bad. Spell power not spell power spot is pretty is very weak. So and hey, it's it's a black mage. Since we don't have spoon, sane a very smart uh, yeet of of Edward. I mean, we. Edward's not really contributing, really, so that's fine. Well, well, it, if maybe if we find a spoon, that will change. Might may change, but right now, uh, uh, Edward, uh, you can you can take a you can take a break. Finally, we can use that charm rod we found on Mount Ordeals. Um, it's kind of a rude dwarf castle tonight in some ways because my concern is if Sheep Launcher takes this early. Um, we we saw. I'm sure both of our runners can handle this, but that's a little bit tricky because you're following up the damage with more damage that you're guaranteed to take from that wave off of Leviathan. But over on Sheep Launcher's side, very important thing to have just found in a treasure or in a shop, finding the cursed ring in the Kaipo armor shop. Very, very important. Uh, if we find a foo later on, we can use them as an anchor. We don't have to worry about that or anything else. And that is something very important that Sheep Launcher has found that Dishmu, I believe, skipped entirely. Yeah, a uh, cursed ring makes a seed much safer for a Z fight. You don't, you don't have to really worry about who the anchor is. Does it, like you, just, you could just put on a Palum. Palum can bluff, uh, bluff the magic power loss. That's fine. The cursed, cursed ring. Saul pretty much saves saves your run most of the time, and and I can't it, it can't it can't go without saying uh, you need when you have an anch when you need an anchor cursed ring makes practically anyone your anchor. Um, there are some obviously some characters are better anchors than others at least those that don't uh, gain uh, agil don't gain su agility quickly like Atella or Fu who doesn't gain any agility. But uh, like a like you could be kind of like a cheeky palm. <laughs> With the cursed ring, and you know, bluff your way to kind of recovering the lost power, and that those are those become really good. You have more options on the table when a cursed ring is available in the seed. Definitely, Dishmo getting, I believe, a sword. Uh, did not see which sword it was in exchange for that uh, dwarf castle check, but that's going to be a big boon. Probably one of the best things he could have found. It was a crystal sword. Yeah, definitely the best thing he could have found, short of an adamant armor. Uh, if he wasn't going to get a reward from that. But speaking of being rewarded here, uh, Rosa over here having uh, lunch with Edge's mom and dad, going to have that king and queen Eblin fight for free here. This should be pretty good, but there's always that chance for something sneaky hiding at that second spot that could be very, very dangerous on Sheep Launcher's side. 
I, I like it when the when the the first boss is uh, easy, but not this easy. Uh, this is this, it's kind of a kind of a wasted spot of, of, of a freebie, but hey, it's there. Uh, but this also guarantees, hey, this, there is the surprise, the Val behind that. Yeah, but we have a cane, so e even if we're having some uh, accuracy issues, cane will solve them by uh, jumping and will st to stop the spin. Uh, but this also means that. Um, Porum is not long, not too much longer for this world because she's the. F in in usually these scenarios, when you see a Rosa, Por and Porum is in your party, uh, Porum gets the eat because uh, a d more durable white mage and one that learns all all the important spells earlier. Uh, that's that's what gets you into a party. You, your value increases when you when you get when you learn all the things quicker. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate with these flags. You know, normally when I think of seeds where I might want to see a forum over seeing a Rosa, I think of a really, really jetty seed where I want access to Berserk early on just to get through some of those earlier checks. And this is a marathon, not a sprint. We've got all but two of the terminal key items required by the seed. Well, technically three if you count the pass, but the pass is really a key item doesn't count. So no matter what, we're going to see a very high completion percentage in the seed. So that's not really going to help that much in terms of the case of keeping a porum. But going to go ahead and head back underground on Chief Launcher's side with that strength ring. Deesh move through that in the time it took me to talk about all this. So that's showing how much power that crystal sword's giving him. This is a very wide open race at the moment. I believe all that's left to gate progress right now is Keyless Tower and those two fame art spots. I think this is, it's a, um, I think what Dishmu did earlier w will benefit him mo a bit more, well, maybe not, because Palm's not, doesn't have Quake yet, but it, it, it's, this is the moment, when, especially when there's not much, you don't have that many options on the table, that you actually want to do, you have the Sirens, you should do, at least do one to get uh, Cecil actu uh, actually on, and Kane even further online with the, if, uh, with the whoever gets the Avenger and gets the levels will make every all part of the season. So it might it makes sense for at least from at least from my perspective. You know, Sheep Lodgers probably should just take at least one A grind, and you should and should be fine for the rest of the underground. I mean, not not to say that um, maybe crack a few more sirens, maybe to take the, to then take on. Uh, I don't quite remember who was at the King Queen level spawn, but you. I think if you if you uh, crack crack enough eggs, you can pretty much smash I, both spots on the Fae March pretty easily. Yeah, those two spots were dolls, and it was a sparkle on the king spot. And those dolls could pose a bit of a problem if we don't have a great way of dealing with them. We have not found hourglasses anywhere yet. The only place left that we could possibly find them is in that cave Eblin shop, which requires the hook. And you don't know what that sparkle is going to be, but you definitely know it's not going to be Wyvern, and that's a bit of a problem as well. So until Dishmu gets a uh, Palom to Quake, and in Sheep Launcher's case, uh, we don't know what to do in that case. Uh, well, actually, Dishmu has gotten rid of the Palom. I forgot that part. So yeah, that's that's a problem. We don't have a great way of dealing with those dolls right now. And that's going to make me think that both of our runners might be eyeing that top of tower pretty, pretty interested. I think the dolls are uh, kind of easier to some degree. Um, I don't know what the I, I don't know the attack power that they'll get at the Azure spot. I know. I mean, I know what Azure does, so but I don't. But I think. The dolls are actually less triple, and you can like you don't have to do anything sophisticated. You just have to manage how you how you how you attack, attack them. You can base, but you can't use berserk. You, so uh, the more vanilla strat is to kind of take care take care of both sides evenly. You kill you essentially get rid of two Cal, two Brenna, and um, given that we have a Cecil, we have a Kane, uh, we would want to you we want a Kane to jump on the back the back cow and take, have Cecil and whoever take care of the Brenner and then finish whatever damage up on the cow. That That is a sh usually a safe way so you don't ta have to tackle the the big doll which uh, brings nightmares and can 
will be very, actually pretty, pretty angry and punchy and will cause other issues down the road. So I think the, the Cal Brenna fight might be, might be, I guess, less trivial because you don't have like, you don't have, uh, you may not have Quake Kid. I mean, you, I mean Dishmu ditched Quake Kid. Uh, Sheep Launcher has yet to find Quake Kid. So I think when you look, when look at me in that lens, I'm not so scared about the dolls. I would be more, I would be more scared of whatever the mis the sparkle ha happens to be. Definitely Sheep Launcher demonstrating the danger of this dwarf castle that we have tonight, where we had that Dark Knight Cecil fight into Leviathan, having a little bit of a rough time with it. Not so much in terms of, oh, he might lose to it, as we're seeing now that he's gotten through the fight, as much as it is having a bit of a slow fight just due to how things played out for him. And those are those little things that end up adding up in the long term. We'll see what he does after picking up this crystal sword outside of be very, very happy to have just gotten a crystal sword. But it does look like you were right. Looks like Dishmu has headed back down this Fey March and he's going to be wanting to take on some bosses here. Looking like he's going to use cover strats with that Cecil right now. I mean, yeah, you, when you when when you have access to the back row glitch, a uh, glitch where a lo which allows you to keep full attack power by equipping any sort of back row backward compatible weapon like a bow and arrow dwarf axe uh but and and allowing and the massive benefit of being in the back row is double natural double of defense so whatever your stat is double it uh, that's your defense and you'll be able to tank everything so and you, you see see that cover strats become very super useful paladins uh don't with especially with heavy armor don't don't ever have to worry it as long as you don't, as long as they take a turn and not parry, you're good. Otherwise, uh, um, there will be there will be some problems. So, um, yeah, it looks it looks like I think that we're just gonna be targeting the back row. Or no, we're gonna oh we're, we're gonna take on the big doll. This, there's you're not not gonna be able to get rid of the back row that quickly. This is yeah we're gonna, probably gonna see the big doll. Uh, yeah. I, the items not enough damage. You, you need Quake Kid. Just even Quake Kid's nat base Quake is good enough, but this is not going to be enough. And yeah, um, we'll see. Yep, there it is. There's the big doll. Yeah, it was a bit deeply unfortunate. I believe he has the Avenger on that cane and has had Kane knock down all the front dolls first. Uh, that glance on Cecil not going to help things. Confuse Cecil with a crystal sword who is no longer uh, covering your party is going to be deeply unfortunate. We are going to see Edge fault that at this point. Uh, this might be a little bit spicy here on Dishmu's side. He is just going to take the reset for that. Very unfortunate that ended up going that way. We'll see if he just dusts himself off and tries again or tries something else. It looks like he's going to take attempt number two. That, that's one of those things from the Avenger. Like, I, I like Avenger. I like no braiding things, I'm, and I'm sure people do too. But there are bosses that you just cannot use the Avenger on, like a Golbez or... Um, Sometimes a Val at low, at low levels, you can't, like, there are just some bosses you just can't have no control over. And in Cal Brenna, when you have to be more, very strategic in how you target, especially without, with, especially when you don't have a, a, a black mage casting Quake, you, you have to be, you have to be very specific and very targeted, kind of, mi very mindful of how you, how you, uh, destroy, how you go through the boss battle. and. Yeah, that's yep. And can't and I, it happens. I mean, berserk. I like I love berserkers, but you. But sometimes you can't let them do everything on their own. Yeah, it's just it's a bit of a rough fight. Uh, Sheep launcher is going to find one of those uh, free in quotation marks fights here on top of tower that is going to be either the Kaipo guards or the Baron guards. We'll see here in a moment. Those are potentially quite easy to get through. I don't believe he has found any of the real instant death things aside from that assassin dagger. Uh, Officer Soldier, 100% completely free here. Very good thing to find for Sheep Launcher. If you have the uh, uh, the assassin dagger, so one of the one of the tricks to make it to uh, making sure that the we the weapon with the status affliction, um, you have you want to attack the enemy 
after it immediately after it takes its turn. You know, like you, you see the you see the car- uh, the monsters flash when they're taking the turn. Well, if you if you hit them immediately after they take the turn, the, the, the status effect procs. In this which case, assassin dagger inflicts uh, instant death, and when it procs. It's a dead boss. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an awesome way to go. But looks like Avenger Strats will be ahead here. We don't care about the officer as long as we get rid of the officer or the soldiers. They, they the the battle effectively ends. That is a slightly painful check to see on Dishma's side. Finding a moon veil from those dolls. Moon veil is very good to find, but not when you just struggle through that. Finding D Lunars at this other spot can get through this as long as he's patient enough. Should be just fine as long as he uses like the frog strats instead of anything else. So this is potentially a free fight, and we could see Dishmu just get through this Fey March very quickly here, as long as he has enough HP for this Cecil to last. I think the Moon Veil is the one you actually want. You just use it on Cecil, he'll be immune. Uh, the attacking, I uh, don't think that's the, that's the good play because, uh, yeah, that's that's what's happened. The virus is too strong, even though, uh, uh, even though the, um, the, um, Leviathan spot isn't as magic strong as the Azure spot, uh, virus still hurts. And so, what, so, the, the moon, you just want to use Moonveil on Cecil, let them breath themselves into frogs, and you're pretty, and, I don't think, it might not be guaranteed that both of them will be frog, but at least one of them. And then if you attack the frog, you should be in good shape with the Cecil. You don't need, like, the, the Moon Veil is a blessing in disguise. Unfortunately, it does not matter anymore, as Dishmu did not save after getting that Calcabrina fight down. No longer has that Moon Veil in his inventory to use against these. Needs to do this sort of the old-fashioned way of just live long enough to get through these. But... Over on Sheep Launcher's side, finding a Baron Key in exchange for Keyless Tower. That is also an objective. That's our third objective we have here. So he's going to go ahead and hit that second one on the board, head straight back above ground and just get through there. And that is a way around having to deal with these painful Fey March bosses or painful Moon bosses at this point. I think, I mean, the only character that um, Sheep Launcher would be looking for by this point is just a Foo. I mean that's that, that's all there is to it. I mean, may have may have and pro, it might replace the Rosa, but more likely replace the Cane because then then the Avenger is can be dedicated to Cecil. You don't have to share, and a Cane doesn't. Cane is still is a great still a great character overall for for beginning to end, but probably not lacking in the in the late game offense because due to uh, weapon options uh, we don't have Super Smith available, so Cane is. A, quite limited to a white spear defense sword uh or dragoon spear whichever whichever makes you happy and those, those and those are per, they're all pretty useful in their own um for their for their own purposes looks like uh, just d lunars yep reflective breaths are uh kind of a fresh a fresh, fresh air and good enough so that um you can revive everyone and reap in the xp Definitely very, very uh, good play on Dishmu's side. Sheep Launcher just needs to get through this water hag fight and whatever's on the throne, and we'll see what's behind Baron. This is going to be a very important key item check, because this is the main divergence between our two runners right now. Which one of these pays off is going to be a very, very important question. That is a tower key, meaning Dishmu does not have to double dip that tower. He's going to know right to go there right to get that Baron key, and that will be an objective, and possibly another one, depending on what's behind that super cannon. There aren't too many other places to go anyway, so that, I mean, that, that was, like, uh, that was your only choice. That's so, but not having to double dip certainly a very a strong bonus. I mean, it doesn't, but well, depends on what the tower key results in. I don't, uh, it, and to, that might affect, uh, that certainly will affect you uh, sheep launcher. If if the tower key doesn't result in anything, if the if the resulting key item on the tower from the super cannon spot doesn't uh, net uh, like a uh, an important key item, then th- that time is actually saved by sheep launcher. So the, so we'll have to, if it is something if, if it's something an important gated key item, then it benefits Dishmu. 
So, because it's time that cheap launcher has it for double dipping, and it's another sparkle. Let's see what thing shows. Oh, it's yes, the slow snake. Yeah, should be trivial. Just, just uh, smash it, call it a day. Don't end, but don't have to think too much. Hit A to win, but probably want to revive Rosa because oh no, Rosa's gonna be the. Looks like Rosa's gonna be the anchor. That looks like no XP on Rosa means that she's probably anchor of the scene. That is very interesting use of an anchor here. I am impressed at the dedication of keeping Rosa on the floor in order to not get XP. Dishmu heading up this tower now, gonna get through that. Oh, that foo. I think Rosa's time as anchor is gone because I believe Sheep Launcher has that curse ring. You can throw it on that foo, and that is a huge bonus for Sheep Launcher here. Gonna sort of compound his little bit of an advantage here. Obviously, we'll have to wait to see what's behind that super cannon to know whether or not Sheep Launcher is in the lead. But if that super cannon ends up being a zonk, not actually getting Dishmu anything, Sheep Launcher might have just pulled fairly far ahead at this point in time. I, mean, the, I think the advantage might be reduced depending on what what the uh, super cannon item happens to be. But yeah, um, you I mean you already you've just you've determined who your anchor is, and we can, and with a cursed ring, instant anchor. Pretty much anyone can be in the center. Oh, probably on Edge. Edge is... Uh, here's the pen, so... Yay. Double... Well, we know that was gonna ha happen. And there's still... What is at the um, Odin spot in the in the barren um, basement floor. But I think worth skipping. If you're not if you're not gonna be able to take on Fey March, you're probably not gonna take on the Odin. Pen is the immediate go-to. And we'll, and so we can hope... Hoping for, say, a hook... Or, part, or the legend sword, or something, some some key item that is still required in the seed. I think there's still uh, like at least three, at least three, uh, three key items: the pink tail, the legend, the hook. That is still that still needs to be looked found. Absolutely, and you know, it's really really interesting because Sheep Launcher has cracked the seed back open. I think both of our runners as. Uh, Dino Cat or Restreamer was sort of hitting on a bit in chat, have lost a lot of XP off of these boss fights just from having uh, characters down at the end of them when they were giving a good amount of uh, XP. And now Sheep Launcher has just found three more outs to not have to go to the moon. Because I don't think either of our runners want to go to the moon quite yet. They're a little bit low on power. They'd have to probably crack a few eggs ahead of time. But Sheep Launcher is going to find that hook in exchange for that Pan Bonk and head down to Fey March. So that's going to get him that tower key soon. This is a really interesting situation because we won't know what's at Sheila 2 for a little while. I would have thought maybe to do the hook route. The levels are still are still more than enough for hook route. I mean, Fu was completely online. And just doing the hook route, you'll be brought, brought it back down to the underground anyways, and then you can do Fey March. That would at least maybe that's something that could be done. I mean, that's... But uh, I guess we're... I guess, guess we're going to be trying to... T I don't think we found the uh, trap chest, so I guess if we do find the... We, f we do find uh, the trap chest, uh, hoping for maybe an adamant, because, you know, that's, that's the name of this uh, tourney. Uh, you want the adamant, because... That uh, pretty much gets gets any character over the hump. Not have to not have to worry about the Z fight as much because Adamant cures a lot of things, equipable on any character, but uh, DKC because uh, you want a DKC. How about how about Burr? So this is a real fascinating situation that we have going on right now where Sheep Launcher is going down this Fey March, is going to pick up that tower key at this point in time. I think he's sort of of the mind right now, okay, I'm strong enough to take these Fey March checks. I'm going to minimize my travel time by just going to them straight away after doing that pan bonk. If that's the case, then I would expect when he sees that tower key, he's probably going to feel compelled to chase that tower key down and just go ahead and go to this check. So that might have just mitigated any advantage that Dishmu got out of uh, getting that tower key early. So sort of the clock is on on Dishmu's side to see what he gets out of the super cannon room and act on it. He might be a little bit ahead right now in some ways, 
down that objective for Baron Castle, but that's going to disappear when he actually gets through that check, and he really needs to get going right now at this point. I mean, the wipe that Dishmook took, uh, not not ha- having an Avenger Kane uh, mess up mess up the plans. I mean, that's that that's that's time that is that is also a fa- that's factored into that. So, yeah, you're correct. I mean, you have f- you have food. Uh, you, qu- you can pretend you're qu- pretend he's Quake Kid for for two seconds. I mean, you don't even have to worry. You don't. The 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 battle is practically over. But I get the not working. Are we, looks like we're gonna do that. Um, so uh, looks and I think uh, wait. I, th- I guess we're done. Just go full burr. Uh, I'm not too sure what new stop. Interesting. Oh, we would have prevent, probably prevented, but it, Quake is more than enough, but okay. Whatever. Um, it's fine. Maybe those just, maybe Cheap Launcher is going to do this straight, you know, do it straight immediately to the next fight. Like, we're not going to, we're not going to go back and save to, you know, whatever, to, and to, you know, to, to be safe. No, we're just going to do this. It, whatever results, we're going to, we're going to do the, the next spot right after. I, I don't think, I don't, I don't think it matters too much. And it looks like Dishmu will find out what that item is. It's Luka Key, which may be a rabbit hole, right? And so right now, it's a bigger chain, and it looks like Dish will at least check to see what to just kind of peek at what the key item is, and if it has, if it's a required item to be taken out, well then complete the, well, then complete the, uh, click that, complete do that. But key, having being able to kind of peek the key item allows you know some time, think, some thinking time, you know, to what the what the plans are next because there are not too many options other than to either do Odin spot or go straight to the moon wind and going straight to moon at this point starting to loom. Yeah, definitely. It's really interesting on Dishmu's end that he is going down here. And I think both of our runners are probably going to be a bit of the mind. They're like, all right, I'm going to get this underground done with ahead of time. I don't, I don't care that there's Forge left on the table, you know? I have to go down the hook route at some point in time, but there's no pressure for me to go down the hook route, so I can bundle those two together later if I find that Legend Sword. We have that Crystal Sword on the Cecil on both sides, they don't need the Excalibur. So I think their goal right now on both sides is probably clear out the entirety of this underworld and not come back until they get down that hook route, and I really like that play as a general rule. Sheep Launch are going to take a reset out of this D-Lunar's fight. Uh, he should be fine as long as he sort of just resets back, but it looks like he's going to exit instead, and that means he is not going to get that tower key that leads to this Luka key, which might have saved him, because that's a package. Not the not the key item, so it's, ac- so it's actually a trap. It's the rabbit hole that Dishmu has shunk, kind of, kind of shot into, so... But uh, does although that still does get Dishmu at least a little ahead, further ahead on the key items a little ahead only by one because oh no no wait no oh, uh, yeah by one because of the tower because of the, having the tower key uh, package not taken because you know we just reset just reset out of it so yeah looks and look, Sheep Launcher will look at the results of Sheila two uh, do we do we find out what that was yet I don't th- I think this I guess we'll find out right now. We have not yet, because the pan was from the Baron Key. Dishmu is not headed back above ground. Check that out. It is just going to be a Samurai Bow. Sheep Launcher is up that Baron Castle check. The only options available to him right now are that Baron Castle basement and heading to the moon right away. Neither of those is the most appealing if you're feeling a bit weak, but I think both of our runners are feeling quite strong right now, and that's definitely a good thing. The thing that might help Dishmu out of this situation where he is a bit behind right now, but not irreparably so, obviously, is that he's going to be closer to 10 key items when he starts getting through some of these big ticket spots like on the moon, and that might help him gain a little tiny bit of that time back later. It won't gain all of it back, but some of it and uh, real quick, I just want to give a quick shout out as well to make sure that you uh, follow both of our runners, make sure that you're spreading the love around to them. They're both running a very interesting and very different race and a very well run race right at the moment, as well as uh, make sure that you uh, give your love to our behind the scenes team today, uh, Xenocat on the restream and Judge Joe on the tracking. Uh, 
again, thank you to both of them, and thank you to all for watching. This is uh, why we put these shows on here. Yes, and thanking staying up late for us. Uh, may not be late for uh, some of you, but for some of us, uh, it's late for us. And you know, what just talking about <laughs> just talking about the match is a lot of fun, and and just the or and just and watching it just. <laughs> It's it's certain it's brings a certain amount of joy. So yeah, it's it's fun. And Dishmu looks going through go uh, no, knows exactly what's what's in front of him. Uh, you know that it's a water hag. Not, since we've done Alt Gauntlet on Mount Hobbs, didn't have to do it. But hey, well at least we at least we know what it, what's there. She blonds her check. I guess peeking at least peeking i would say if you're not if you're not gonna do it you're gonna at least peek see what's there if you don't like what's there like some 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 nasty boss uh probably exit out and just do the lunar circle running peeking we're just gonna do it no okay. he he's the one who uh, went up and peeked earlier so actually he knows what is at this spot knows that it is that assure and will be going for this fight here that is a very spicy play i don't think that this assure is going to cause him any particular difficulty at this point in time I like this play a lot. Might as well get that objective out of the way before diving the rest of the moon. And, you know, if this leads to another rabbit hole, he can always bail out a lot easier than it is, you know, when you get down to the bottom of the subterranean, you're facing that walk again if you bail out. I'm trying to think of the map here. But if you if you have, if, um, like, I'm thinking, you could have kind of tried to do, like, a glitch using some mute arrows or the elven bow, put it on Cecil instead of the crystal sword, and then use the Avenger glitch, because that will do more damage than the crystal... That might... That will do more crystal... That will do more damage than the crystal sword, because the crystal sword, while being the strongest weapon in the game, uh, you're, you're working against uh, something that has a attack... Increases your attack multiplier from the racial bonus from uh, the mate being a mage. So that... That, but that which that would be something clever to kind of shave a little bit of time, like in the in the absence of having a mute knife. He's, 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 I'm pretty sure there's an elven bow in the inventory. Just put up with the best arrows, and that should do more damage than the crystal sword. But eh, if you don't, if you're not sure, eh, crystal sword's just fu it's just fine. <laughs> Putting in the back row, it's you know, it's the strongest sword in the game for a reason. Definitely Dishmo gonna get the news here that there is a Fu in the seed. Gonna get the news here. There's a Pan available to him as well. Gonna be obviously incentivized to go check that. I wonder if Dishmo, having gotten through those two Fey March fights already, is going to check Baron Castle Basement before leaving. That is the next real decision point that could be a very big difference here between the two of them since Sheep Launcher did not check that whatsoever before leaving. And we know that there are only a grand total of seven options available to our runners to progress through the seed. That is one of them. Yeah, I think, I mean, if it certainly would be a time save in the sense that it's, you're already there, you might as well do it. So at least if you're not, if you don't like what you see, you can, you can, um, you can, uh, you can, um, set out of it. I think it's, and right now, teach me with the sa with the save, safety save, just in case. And I mean, you have Fu. When you once you once you see a Fu, your your confidence in, in getting the seat done and over with increases. Uh, like, there are just characters, or at least and they don't have to be like Cecil or Fu. There can be other characters like a Rosa or uh, even a Kane. Like at, at certain points of a seed where that the skill that 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 character brings to you at the time. Can we babble? And oh, it's free because Doctor Dialogue. Outside of there's like there's only like one phase that is that could be uh, devastating. The uh, when he uses the second phase with the laser because it's based off of his HP. But even then, it's split. There's it's a four way split of HP, and this is this is an easy free fight, free experience. Hopefully, this 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 objective, whatever the key items at this spot, might give uh, Dishmus back some time. Meanwhile, over on Sheep Launcher's side, having a bit of a rough time getting through this Assure. It does see the Cure 4 land, although I'm not sure this might be one of the spots where Cure 4 doesn't technically work. There are a few spots in the game where Cure 4 will actually just cause a weird overflow kind of thing and not actually function, and as Xenocat is confirming in chat, this that's not happening here. But Sheep Launcher gonna take the reset, not happy with how that fight's going. Gonna head back down and load a save down the Fame March. I think he might be looking at taking another stab at that, or might be heading up to where uh, Dishmu is at this Dr. Luggett spot right now.
I think, yeah, uh, I think there was a recent discussion in the scene about like, bringing out the glitch. I think there's a there's an exception to that rule. Apparently, I think it's like somewhere around third, about double that HP mod at that value where it does work again. It's it's a, it's one of those bugs where, uh, yeah, but partly it's math, partly it's code. Where there is a section where actually it does work again. It's just, it's. It's one of those spell. It's one of those things where you, you you coded it, and you don't you don't think you you'd uh, you'd see people taking advantage of it. Like it's easier in vanilla where the HP spot is not as high, but the Bahamas spot has a fair chunk of HP. So yeah, and hey, spoon, and we have we still have an edge, so it's a good dart. But I don't. There aren't too many bosses left where uh, we actually need to use it. Maybe I think. The only boss that you probably want to yeet up before you hit Z would be a D-Mist, and D-Mist, uh, you want very tanky, you want to get rid of a D-Mist as quickly as possible, and Spoon gets you there if you, if you have, if, otherwise, uh, Z will love it. Yeah, it's one of those things with the Asura Overflow glitch where it's kind of like, you know, Final Fantasy IV, the video game, is not so much coded as much as it is a just sort of natural occurring formation that has sort of come up over the years. And, you know, it's a very, very pretty thing, but occasionally it does have some rough edges around it. And that is just one of them. You know, moving a Sir around, she just gets too much health. Meanwhile, we are going to see there are Bacchus wines available here in the Eblin Cave, Sheep Launcher looking like he maybe wants to go ahead and do that hook route, get it out of the way. No coffins, no hourglasses, Fox only final destination for the seed, so definitely a good thing there. We love making our runners have a little bit more difficulty with some of the fights that are coming up. Still haven't seen Dark Gifts, still haven't seen the Baron Guards, and we know that that progression is locked behind a spot on the moon, so very exciting times coming up once our runners get there. Dishima will be there very soon. I believe the boss at this spot was Mega Sisters. So, uh, there it is. There it is. Uh, the Sid. Uh, yep. We're not taking the Sid. Not. There's. There's kind of no. No world at this point when you have a Fu and a Cursed Ring where you want to take a Sid. Sid would normally be a great anchor with the Cursed Ring, but uh, Fu is better. So, Sid. Are we hardly new ye? Uh, Mega Sisters might bring us a little bit of trouble. Not. It might slow slow Sheep Launcher down a little bit. But should not be a problem. I mean, if you can defeat uh, whatever's at Fey March, uh, Mega Sisters, not so bad. The only thing that's a bit concerning to me from this play on Sheep Launcher's side is this is not going to get him any more progress outside of just getting that objective done. And while getting those objectives done is important, there is an element to where this is not going to allow him to see more at the scene. And it's kind of pushed us back into a place where I'm not sure who's ahead right now. If Dishmu just heads straight to the moon, starts clearing moon bosses, then Dishmu is probably ahead because while he may have to go down that hook route at some point, he is going to be possibly doing so with an adamant armor. If he finds the paint tail, he's going to be possibly doing so after getting a lot more XP and making the hook route even easier than it should be on this end. But it does look like Dishmu is going to drop off this hovercraft and we might be seeing dueling hook routes here. Yeah, um, I can understand doing this, I think. And I, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before. A uh, very, very close, very interesting race. Uh, I think it was a race where Possumorpheus uh, literally put uh, essentially a hovercraft here, had required giant, so you'd, route, you'd do giant, route that into the Falcon, because. In, and you had already had a uh, magma key access, so that that would have been the the more most efficient routing for the for the Falcon late in a seed. And doing this now, I mean, things probably for probably not quite comfortable, ready to take on tackle the moon. But this is this is the kind of kind of one of the last things you want to do before doing the moon, anyways. So. I can under I understand the I understand that um, you know may not be comfortable, but what ends up happening is your moon is going to be your grind anyways. So, you're, so I can understand what why this is happening, and there are more clever, certainly clever, more clever ways of you know, tech routing this. But right now, I think it's just the comfort level of what you have and what you have and what you're concerned about in terms of uh, what's on the moon. 
you know, I've always been sort of an advocate with this game of do what you are comfortable with, and I think that is probably playing in here. Dishmu, of course, poison walking is way up the entirety of Evelyn Cave, uh, which is a wonderful visual bonanza for today. Sheep Lots are gonna find this D-Mist here at the King and Queen Evelyn spot. That's probably a pretty good place to find the D-Mist because you do not want to have to try and DPS down Moon D-Mist with all the HP those spots have. And so, yeah, I think this hook route's not gonna pose too much of a problem for either runner. It'll get him a few more levels, and maybe you consider, if you're Sheep Launcher, going back down trying those D-Lunars again. Maybe if you're a Dishmu, you're, well, if you're Dishmu, all you're gonna have left is head to the moon. So that's going to be the next stop for him, and that's going to be very, very, very interesting because you gotta expect that he's gonna run straight down that cave value and find that Asura as well. So I've kind of just noticed the tracking, uh, and um, great job by Jojo. Um, that Dishmu has actually has 10 key items. Pra so basically, the Dishmu will probably recover a lot of the time just, just doing the moon grinds. Sheep Launcher is a bit behind in the key item count, uh, se with only seven. So Sheep Launcher is, is kind of a, in a deficit, it kind of will be an, an XP deficit once the moon grind essentially ha effectively happens. And ideally, uh, when you're kind of a few key items, you're probably not going to do the uh, the D lunar spawn the move, where the, the two ribbons are normally put, placed. You probably want to do some kind of like do a, maybe a top down approach. Try to get your key items from the other spots, and then and then try to do uh, the ribbon room as your final spot to to collect the most XP. Then to follow and try to follow that up with immediately with the giant. There's, that's where your ex, where your effective grind ends up being. Um, when you have uh, the ten key items, uh, your XP is doubled. So the the boss spot, I think at the lunar, at the D lunar spot is a uh, two hundred thousand. Assuming that there's just one boss, and when there's more than one boss, well, the kind of split bosses, uh, that number kind of fluxes a little bit. So uh, and uh, the CPU spot has three hundred. The the CPU spot is at 300,000, and the element spot is over 100,000. The numbers are large, so your grind is going to happen really quickly. With and um, yeah, it's the the key item will probably get really get the smooth that time back for sure. I think the seed is a very very good demonstration of the difference between how you kind of have to look at who's sort of in the lead in this flag set versus other flag sets we've had in our tournaments. Because in other flag sets, you'd be looking at like, all right, who takes the correct uh, route first? And this is a very different thing of how do you get through the seed? How quickly do you get through these checks? And how much do you add power for later checks as well? either through loot or through experience or through anything else that you might find. And so Dishmu does have that ability to catch up at this point, is just now getting through the D-Mist, whereas Sheep Launcher through the hook route, those Maga Sisters not posing a problem to him. And, you know, he might go down and do those D-Lunars, that might cost him a bit of time, but it's kind of hard to say who's in the lead, because I feel like Dishmu, like you mentioned, having those 10 key items is going to have that bit of an advantage in the speed of getting through a lot of the rest of this right now, although Sheep Launcher is going to go ahead and crack a few eggs, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, pro one of the things is sometimes is when you do your grind, even if it's like one egg or two eggs, like, and uh, from just uh, kind of a tip, if you have a Palom and maybe he's base level, one egg will get a uh, Quake Kid almost to Quake level in with one egg without double XP. So, just so one of, that's kind of how the measure, the measure of getting Quake Head online with one egg, uh, that has value. At least sometimes I mean, I've seen people, and I've seen you know just do the just short grind, get get your characters uh, ready, uh, kind of like underground level, underground ready. One egg is usually enough. This I think in this case though I think is more of uh, um, getting enough XP to tackle the uh, Leviathan spot. I think. If not the moon, either way, either choice, the grind do, doing the grind here right now makes a lot of sense, especially if you're not comfortable with 
just hope, just peeking in some of the moon bosses because you know, there's, there's only so many uh, free uh, boss spots, effectively free boss spots left on the on on their trackers if they're tracking. It has often been said by some uh, commentators wiser than I that safety is a strategy, and if you get enough levels like Sheep Launcher's doing right now, then you'll be able to get through anything anyways, and it doesn't really matter at that point in time. And I think that's really important to keep in mind here is that while Sheep Launcher might not be doing the most optimized grind at the moment, not having those 10 key items, this might still just be enough of an advantage to compound a little bit. Dishmu going to go ahead and set that Meteo off to take down these Maga Sisters. You love to see it. Always good to have that little bit of style points coming out. Sheep Launcher is going to head back down to these D Lunars, and I think he's going to have a much easier time now that he has uh, those few levels on the board. Yeah, I think I think usually, I, I mean, if you have like, if there's some like easier bosses, then you could probably get away with doing it at the at, at a, up to a certain level. I'm not sure how low that level is, maybe kind of like mid twenties. Uh, usually, you want, if you want to tackle these, you want to do kind of like mid thirties on on average. I'm not, I mean, it's different for HC, but sometimes, but and depending on what bosses, but you can kind of you have a good gauge based on the average levels i would kind of ignore foo in that calculation because uh level 51 foo doesn't count <laughs> foo with all all his magic it that, that counts the only level that matters on foo is the hp level once it hits 1900 he has all his spells that's that's it he's he's as good as he's gonna get he might gain a little bit more hp here and there but that's about it the danger with this right now is does Sheep Launcher go to tower right after, or does he say, all right, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and go elsewhere and commit to not doing that. Because I think both of our runners are kind of in this unique position where they might feel a bit behind at this point. And it's not necessarily due to any like bad play or bad decisions on either runner's part. Their decisions have been very, very solid, very spot on for the races they're looking to run here. But... This has just been one of those seeds where you're probably feeling a bit behind if you're in either of their positions, and you might be tempted to try and skip that tower key for already been in tower on Sheep Launcher's side. I, I think I'm fairly sure that they, I think both sides have at least wiped once. So if you've wiped once, and especially in a, in a especially if you if you wipe in a long battle, you're tempted to fade. That's what that's what tends to happen when you fade so in sheep launcher's case it might be beneficial but it depends on how you and how, how he ends up routing it but a new year like a lot oftentimes when a runner uh you know it really just you don't have a good time in the fight it like you're just tempted you're tempted to gamble and that sometimes that gamble really means just fading whatever's whatever's there so i guess we'll find out uh we'll find out if sheep decides to fit fate as that would be the prudent choice as that as, as we as viewers as we viewers can see that being the, the right choice but sheep launcher doesn't know and so the time the time the time deficit or time gained will, will certainly be determined by sheep and the issue where it looks like uh hey i want to do giants because don't doesn't like doesn't seem like eh, the items look uh that are left i think what's left uh is the pink tail and and uh, the and the legend sword, and Cape Bahamut itself won't cover it. So that means that there is guaranteed at least one key item minimum. There could be more due to which due to chaining that will that be meaning that yeah we're gonna have an LST dive soon after this giant run, regardless. Definitely, and we know from the current spot that you actually have will have to get at least two key items out of the. Um out of that moon at this point in time because we do have the two different terminal key items still on the board. We have that pink tail and we have that legend sword. All the ones that would give two checks, the baron key and the pan are both already on the board, already checked. Meaning that no matter what, that subterrain is also very, very required. And I'm wondering, Dishmu has these 10 key items. He's going for his last arm chest right now. Are we going to see the illustrious return of our good friend D Dot Machine to get a few more levels before we get through these giant checks right now? I don't think it's likely, but I'm 
it's interesting how we've, you know, seen the differences in these flag sets, and now I'm sitting here like, oh, but I want to see Dean Machine. I haven't seen him in so long. Uh, uh, if you're if you're if you're wondering, I think it, it would be worth peeking what it is at the uh, at the element spot first. Then, if if whatever is there is too nasty, like say an Ogo, uh, then then the grind is on. That's <laughs> what it's got. It's got to end up. Depends. Really depends on what that boss is. Because, um, because then you don't. Because you don't. If it's free, then you don't have to grind. You skip it. You and you get get the levels because that spot still gives you plenty of XP. So, I would if you in, in the trying to optimize and hope and kind of like gamble a little. And this is not too small of a gamble. You don't want to grind if you don't have to. But. You're gonna get the grind from the lunar subterrain. This is that's I mean that's what right now what, that's what the key items were what we know, at least what the runners know. You're gonna get your key items from the lunar subterrain. So why do sec effectively second grind if you don't have to? And oh no. Uh that line didn't quite go to the moon, it decided to be here in the giant. You know, he was up there chilling on the moon and then the giant comes down from the moon. Now it's like, oh, how did I end up here? I think I got on the wrong plane somewhere along the way. And that just happens. He's in a strange airport. He is quite mad about it. And he is going to take it out on their party here. This is going to be a little bit of a rough time no matter what. Uh, I don't think if our, either of our runners are going to necessarily have a problem with it, but this is going to be a long fight and it is going to be a bit of a grindy fight. We do have a way around that counter with Kane, with Edge, but this is still going to be a little bit spicy depending on how these counters come out here. Uh, I mean, Edge is only one shot away from taking a nap, and Fu just took a nap because front row, uh, you, you get really big punches, and mages uh, don't really have armor, so... Well, Fu now being on crit will, will, will only be vulnerable to a counter, which I'm still not not in the best position to be in, but uh, better than uh, no, better than nothing. So we'll probably take the most take the most out of cover stress because uh, why not? Any might not might just be behoove uh, uh, Shmo to not uh, just see the, the parry on Cecil, which means uh, Edge, can, Edge can't be covered automatically. So probably needs to you know. The, wor the worst thing, the best thing you can do if you don't know what to do for Cecil, cast Cure 2 on himself. Heal himself so he can take another hit. That's all, and not worry about it. But, that, it, so, I, but still, be, it's just going to be a slog because uh, that's, um, because, uh, you know, it's antlined. And this spot won't take prisoners. Definitely not. I think it's also worth noting, you know, this is one of the best uses of a cover Cecil I've seen in quite a while on Dishmu's side. Getting that very early um, crystal armor down in the Fey March chests, getting access to Cecil very early on and just really showing what you can do to get your way through the speed with cover Cecil. This won't matter all that much when we get to bracket phase, unfortunately, because uh, Cecil won't be here and the back row glitch won't be here, so that won't work anymore for multiple reasons. But he's doing a very, very good run here and making sure to put on a clinic with that. Unfortunately, Sheep Launcher has fallen down that tower key rabbit hole and is going to be heading down into this sealed cave where he will find basically nothing. Uh, depending on uh, when this is saved, I think the key item pickups will at least uh, get him back into, uh, into good shape, actually. I think I'm trying to do count. It's only uh, uh, only nine key items not minus the spoon, which is uh, just one key item away from getting full double XP. So maybe an LST dive. But yeah, that that time that Dishmu that Dishmu would have potentially lost now is recovered. So Sheep Launcher will kind of uh, probably find find out that it's a complete womp. So um, well. We'll see what we'll see what she goes next, but right now, uh, at least so far, unless Dishmu uh, has a bad time uh, with the fault the follow up spot on the giant, will kind of be ahead for uh, at least for the time being. It, it's, it, doesn't, it won't doesn't take much for uh, you know people swapping swapping leads. It, it just it takes only one key item, one check. 
And Dishmu is through this now, gonna soak up those seven levels on Kane, six levels on Cecil. I think it was three levels on Edge, but not as much, unfortunately. Sheep Launcher is heading down this. My big question is he's gonna find that 10th key item with the package down here. Is he going to be tempted to walk it back out just to have that 10th key item? My gut says that it's a possibility. I'm not 100% sure he will with Warp not being a part of his... Well, actually, I guess Fu has Warp, so he might be a bit more tempted. Would have to get through that boss fight. I think he's probably going to reset out, but I can see a world in which he might just hold on to that package. And there's the reset. Uh, well, I, guess, I mean, you could... All, all you do is just fight one altar, get a key item, you're all set. I mean, that... that so you're... Instead of going to giant, you just do fullest full uh, lunar subterrain. Just or not even because you need you have to get the pink tail. This is or at least get a key item that gets you the, the pink tail. So I think in cheap launcher's uh, vision, I, it's gonna be full, it's probably gonna be a, kind of like a semi full LST clear. Although I think um, the cave probably cave value will be done first to get the spoon. Therefore, uh, they're getting the tenth key item, and then just then it just becomes a key, uh, pink tail hunt. And uh, at the CP spot, hey, it's free guards, not threatening. You can you can silence them, make them make them small, make them toads. Uh, they can they're pretty harmless. They will still punch, but uh, it's it's free. <laughs> they're not not too bad, and you don't even have to worry about their mage weakness. That looks like uh, we're uh, trying to do the life glitch while we're at it. Uh, life glitch is a kind of kind of a key key glitch that uh, a lot of vanilla runners use. Because hey, uh, uh, one of the things. So what? So what? The life glitch is is um, if you revive a, uh, a target, any uh, character, it can it computes it by, by uh, multiplying the vitality stat of the character times five. But uh, monsters have no vitality. It's zero, and you know, zero times anything is uh, zero. So that means that a monster is revived, quote, air quotes, revived with uh, zero HP, which also means they died. They died again. And so, a con so the consequence of that is, uh, you know, one more kill, more XP, more rewards, and that's that's the that's the that's the base. Uh, you want to target the life potion before the monster is untargetable. So. So when so you have to kind of queue an attack or a spell, uh, and then try to queue a life potion to follow up that kill. And that's how, and that's all it takes to take advantage of the uh, Was that just a reset? And, uh. That indeed was. Unfortunately, is currently 1-0 for the Baron guards here. Uh, Toad could work here as a possible option. Uh, size is technically an option, but it does look like he's gonna just give this another shot the way he was going there. You know, that's kind of the problem with these free bosses. You run out of uh, hourglasses, coffins, and other ways through it. This is uh, no longer free. Free kind of goes in quotation marks at this point in time. Looks like he is trying to stone them. Uh, it's a bit rough not landing on the first try here. Hopefully we'll land it soon if he just wants to get through this fight. But this is not turning out the way that Dishmu expected it to at this point. Meanwhile, over on Sheep Launcher's side, he has gone back up to the Sasurium. We'll see how quickly he can get through this. There's the stone. Dishmu is through the giant now. Second try, first time, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, you know, when, you're, when, when your spellcaster is not in the middle slot, the accuracy, there's an accuracy bonus being in the middle slot. That also means the chaining the anchor in it. Uh, although Dishmu has not found a curse ring, uh, at some point the, uh, the the issue of an anchor may rear its ugly head at some point, and, and it's it's kind of getting closer to that point where uh, that might actually it might cause more time loss due to wipes due to ha not having an anchor, a proper anchor where the boss kind of overruns you by punching you far faster than you'd expect. So. I think the, some some of the time could be lost on Dishmu just not having a, a proper anchor, not even having the curse ring available, and and having kind of uh, skipped the, uh, the the shop, the armor shop at a at a Kaipo when uh, using the sand ruby. I mean that's and that's kind of a you know that's that's time potentially got to be given back to sheep. 
I mean, cheap, cheap can be is. I'm not sure uh, the curse ring's on uh, Fu yet, but when that time comes, Fu will be prop will be properly anchored uh, on Sheep Launcher's side when the time comes. If if not now, sooner rather than later. Yeah, it's one of those things where I feel like if you're not taking like a standard anchor, you don't have either a cursed ring or, you know, someone just lying on the floor taking a nap. That's kind of when you're hoping that you find positive agility equipment so that you can try and maybe like fast anchor with that edge. If you get that adamant armor, if you get a ninja hat, you get a crystal ring, you get him going fast enough, he'll outspeed anything. It'll end up working just fine. But this seed has been noticeably short on that positive agility manipulating gear as well. There hasn't really been a great way to speed up our characters, and so like you mentioned, this is definitely turning into an issue where it might just not work out in terms of that. And this has just been a very brutally difficult seed as unfortunately Sheep Launch are gonna take another wipe to Asura here. I think, I think probably maybe it's, uh, he, um, at this point, the HP level on Cecil not quite uh, where it needs to be. Uh, like Cecil, I, I don't know what level. But usually, when you're when you're when you have the Crystal Sword, Burr is practically online. But you have to, you'd also have to try to get you know all the extra extra um, kind of kind of juice from like the adamant armor or any sort of strength boosting equipment to kind of to kind of move that move that move the uh the character go going quicker it, so uh, right now the this uh, that wipe uh, unfortunate um and looks like lst dive is in the cards there's probably there, will, there should be a few more bosses left that are still free um for ship launcher to take take advantage of i mean still ha still has just still needs one key item probably avoid the ribbon room so maybe White Altar, White Spear Altar, or Ogo Spot. White Spear Altar being the Plague Spot, Ogo, the Master Spot. That those probably might be taken up first. Maybe even the Crystal Swords Altar with the Wyvern Spot. That those are because um, we're skip right now. Sheep skipping the Mirror Spot, which also which would also have just just been a good a choice as any to um, just take just take the take the fight. Hope for the key for a key item drop and be be on his way you know i often say in a lot of these seeds that if you th there's always two different ways you can approach it when you hit a wall like sheep is finding at this assert at this point you can either try and brute force it and hope it goes well or try and think your way around it um as was pointed out in chat you know you could possibly do more setup time on that asura but i do think that sheep's decision here to just go ahead and dive that subterrain where we know that you're going to have to dive that subterrain anyways. Definitely a good choice. You might as well try and find a boss that you're going to have an easier time with, get through that, get some levels, come back to the Sasura because while there may be some situations in which this is not the right play, like say if that Asura has one of the key items we need, this could still work out too well. I don't think Evil Wall is necessarily what he was looking for here, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world either. But Dish moved through this assure spot. We're gonna see what this key item is. This is very, very crucial right now because we know, and it's just a Dragoon Spear and a required objective. So that is probably the best news that Sheep Launcher could have hoped for right now. Yeah, uh, still, uh, having, there's still some, dra there should be some dragon bosses left on the table. Don't know which, just off the top of my head. Dragon, dragon spear, usually pretty heralded as Kane, one of Kane's best spears. Uh, I think, I, I just don't, I, I, I call it the best because, uh, the, the majority of bosses you fight, and the, sometimes the grinds, uh, they involve dragons. Uh, egg grind, dragons, D machine, dragon, um, uh, even uh, not a clapper grinds, but like King Ryu grind, dragon. So and and, and to top it off, three of the uh, three of the four of the five uh, LST vanilla bosses, those are dragons, the sparkles. So just, but I think we're, there's not too many of those left. So that's, but even then, dragon having that spear is still pretty valuable in in the worst case if you don't need it for that purpose it's still a still a solid dart and um dishmu now finding out uh hey you could have had moon porum 
uh, but maybe maybe think maybe thinking uh, maybe a good time to swap swap Porm and not having curse ring for as an anchor. We'll see if Dishmu takes that route as this. I mean, th there is no anchor. Oh, and right now, oh, well, Cecil's currently the anchor, so um, there might it might not be, it might be a little messy, like especially with like Evil Wall being at the at uh, I forget what spot, but could be. Uh, no, you know, it could make uh, the LST run uh, a little bit trickier, for sure. Evil is indeed at the plague spot down here in the White Spear Altar, like you mentioned earlier. You know, this is a good place to get that one key item before we head into that Ribbon Room, which gives so much XP and two different shots at it. Unfortunately, it is going a little bit rough for Sheep at this point in time. Does have three down. Kane might not necessarily be long for this world. Just trying to get this last bit of damage out. There's the last swing, and that is going to be unfortunately another wipe on Sheep Launcher's side. So not quite what he was looking for. Finding this evil wall here. Might try again. Might check one of the other spots. We'll end up seeing Dishmu on his way down. And yeah, as chat pointing out, this is an evil seed, and uh, I, I expected nothing less from uh, the sort of head of the Lit 3 Club themselves, Xeno Cat. So good job on rolling this one. Oh. Ha ha ha. Yeah, here's your here's her here's her seed. And uh Yeah, this so if and usually you want like uh, sometimes you um if you're if you're shopping one of the things you might want probably want to pick up like something like a silk web as that would have probably made the like the evil wall battle a little bit easier to take on there's a lot of bosses you want to slow down you don't want them to just have full reign with their with with the with the atb going out of control for them you you, you want you sometimes want it but also uh star veils uh this this battle uh this this fight uh anytime you find a gold bez you're gonna more, more often than not, except for like low spell power spots, want to, to want to have a moon veil available or star veil available for just reflecting spells. And it not, you know, um, it's it, I mean, it's kind of and same thing for wyvern, same thing for uh, a few other bosses. Uh, you want having extra star veils. You know, this is a really <laughs> that's uh, not a strong cold as you just let yeah, just let a uh, Cecil Burr. Let, that magic doesn't hurt. The Lithri probably the strongest, still not not a real threat. Yep. Dishmu, on the other hand, Dishmu here is doing the, uh, I believe it's referred to as the Demarine play going down the moon here and heading straight up to the Crystal Sword altar first. Gonna find this Octoman, get through it uh, very, very quickly. We'll see what's behind here, but this could be a very large advantage if this pays off. Let's go ahead and see this key item here over on Dishmu's side, and that is it just just a just an apple. Very unfortunate there, it didn't pay off. And to quickly answer a question from chat, can package have tail or legend? No. The package is just a character check in this flag set. Uh, we've already seen Demist, and even if beyond that, Demist is not a key item check in this particular flag set. So no benefit there. Meanwhile, Sheep Launcher gonna pick up the tenth key item from this White Spear Altar. That is a Twin Heart. Yeah, not a terminal key item. So might might be one of the checks being done on the way back. Like uh, if say Pink Tail is behind that, that would be uh, that won't be too tragic because we'll get to hear some music. That's assuming Pink Tail is there. If not. We'll be looking at other spots. Uh, looks like Ogo Spot be, is the next next best thing because you know who doesn't who doesn't like the uh, Ogo? Have we? I don't think we've seen Ogo in this seed yet. Uh, this if is is this vanilla? Um, look, let's well oh, no, it's not. So that's fortunate for sheep. It is fortunate for Sheep. It's also very fortunate for Dishmu, the last remaining dragon boss in the seed, Dark Elf, here at this Ogopogo spot. So that Dragoon Spirit at Dishmu picking up at K value going to be very, very useful when he uh, pops it on the cane here. This is not a very threatening boss for this spot. Every boss is somewhat threatening at the uh, Masamune altar down here at the bottom of the moon. 
but this is probably one of the better ones that you can find out of that list. So this should be pretty good for Sheep, and this is probably what Sheep needs at this point. He's been having a little bit of a rough time, and I think that he will be very, very easily getting through this and very happy at this point. Unfortunately, did leave that Avenger on, so this is going to take quite a bit longer due to not having that Crystal Sword right now. Boy Spear Kane will pick up the slack. Still, it's the other holy weapon that not not on Cecil. So that's that's a kind of a that's kind of a lifesaver, I guess. Kane saving saving a uh, uh, sheep launcher's bacon. Well, Dishmu finding a rat tail and a second and unfortunately useless crystal sword in that particular ribbon room there. Rat tail is very, very interesting. I don't think that there is any situation in which you leave to check that rat tail ahead of time because no matter what, you need to find at least one more thing that leads to a key item. But the question on my mind is when Dishmu gets through that white spear altar, I think he probably is going to go through that Masamune altar no matter what, through that dark elf. Is he going to be tempted to just leave that one spot on the moon and head back with that twin heart and rat tail in hand? Uh, might not be content. I mean, you want, you really want to, th it's the pass. Certainly worth the time taken. I mean, this, I mean, Dark Elf is, the only time Dark Elf is actually threatening is if, if, if it gets the weak off and then follows up with the tri-elemental damage. So, because that, even that, even if you have single digit HP, uh, and even if, uh, it's the weakest, uh, spell power, uh, it only, t it, it only needs double digit level damage to, uh, Put down, put down a character. So, so I think, I think, uh, for this, it makes more sense to keep to do the uh, to to fit to complete, like do do the complete uh, LST bosses because you need the ex you need the experience. Uh, for Sheep Launcher's case, you still have to do giant, giant, and you still that still means you still need levels. So, doing the grind makes better sense. Dishmu not so much because Giant's been completed, so not all all Dishmu is looking for is the key item. More and still in Dishmu's case though, may he could um gamble on um upon finding a harp or the or the rat tail and ho helping pink tails behind either one of them. Whilst pink tail still being hidden at large. Yeah, we do need to find that Legend Sword as well still for that first objective, the Forged Legend Sword with Adamant. So those are going to be two required key items, and that's sort of an interesting map at this point in time. We know this Twin Harp is behind the Skull Bez, we know that the Pass is behind the other spot, and we know that uh, over on Sheep Launcher's side, we've uh, seen where this Twin Harp is again behind the Skull Bez. We've seen the Rat Tail behind the Ribbon Room. Earth Crystal, Legend Sword, Pink tail. The only three things left on the table after this. Do you check that top spot is going to be very, very crucial because if Dishmu does not, and that ends up being exactly like the Legend Sword or the Pink Tail, and Sheep Launcher does check that, that could be a very good in for Sheep Launcher to make up some of the time that he's currently behind. I think. I mean to be, I mean, full clear makes more sense. Your, your, your key item hunt really comes down to, I forgot, I forgot about, uh, got, fought the uh, legend sword for forge. That's just, there's just so many key items, but they're not right now. There are just not many off spots left. Sheep launcher doesn't know that, uh, say the Odin spot has the spoon. So, and because Tishmu took on that spot, if I'm not mistaken. So this is like, that's also, so there's a few rabbit holes that sheep launcher does, really doesn't want to be. So, for, it depends on what uh, the kind of the checks of convenience is. It does it make sense to gamble? There's still two key items, and you can't just leave. You can't really let it to rat tail or harp to be the only possible choices. You kind of want to narrow it down, at least complete. Do it uh, on a completionist type of deal, which again, this flag set leans towards that and makes sense to do. And uh, looks like Dishmu has has plenty of levels, so all right. Z ready, although not anchor ready at all, though. Yes, and Sheep Launcher unfortunately taking another wipe to evil wall there, just does not quite have damage and stability to get through that check right now. So going to go ahead up and check this Crystal Sword Altar. Again, you know, very heads up play by Sheep Launcher, knowing, you know what, I'm having a rough time with this. 
My smartest move in this case is go and do something else for a bit. Try and get more power to get through that. I would be tempted if I were on Sheep Launcher's side to start checking some of these chests. Hope you hit a good trap chest and maybe just spike an Adamant Armor or something that will help you get that little bit of extra damage out. Although there's not a ton of things that would really help outside of that Adamant Armor. But, you know, again, if you can't get around something, if you don't have a way that you can think of to get through it, just go somewhere else. That's still a way of thinking your way around the problem. The hut, the, in, in the LST, the, hut, the highest probability of getting your adamant actually increases significantly compared to any, any other place, because, you know, a lot of the monsters in the chests are just, uh, they can... They can be as simple as some of the uh, warlock carry combos. There's two sets of those. Uh, there's there's a, there's there's a few I would call freebie like easier ones. The ones that you can insta kill them. But there are some there are some uh, there are a lot of what I call womps. Uh, you know behemoths, uh, blue dragon, bim, uh, <laughs> red dragon and blue dragon, bim, bimmy and jimmy. Uh, that's fun double dragon uh reference uh you have those like you have like from I, i've done i've done the math it's only four out of nine po probabilities where you of a trap treasure chest that are easily easily to take care of so you can though it may be worth the gamble just at least on sheep launcher side not so much on dishmu because dishmu has the levels doesn't really need the equipment sheep launcher could just just try to take one to get to the levels necessary to make uh, you know the evil wall easier. Although um, I wonder if the curse ring is actually equipped on Fu, because that would be that might help out on the uh, the anchoring situation. Because if the despite having uh, seen the curse ring, I, I'm not if it's not equipped, it doesn't it it ha doesn't fix the anchoring problem if it's not equipped. Definitely, and that would be a way around. I don't believe I've seen him equip it, but I also have not noticed a lot of his menuing for equips to begin with, so don't take my word for it that he does not have it. Dishmu has gotten back up to the top of the subterrain here. Based off of this uh, ethering and like that of the Fu, I'm going to go ahead and say that he is heading straight back in to check that, is just going to go ahead and full clear the moon with that pass in hand, which means that we are very slowly reaching the very end of the seat here on Dishmu's side. This spot has to be either nothing, in which case we know that Twin Heart is one of Legend Sword and Pink Tail, and Rat Tail is one of Legend Sword and Pink Tail, or it's the Earth Crystal, in which case, uh, well, we don't know. Or it is one of the Legend Sword and Pink Tail, in which case, good luck picking which one. I know I would go for Rat Tail first, because it's obviously free. Yeah, free checks. Do do your free checks, especially if it takes less work, to, less time and work to do. Then you should probably go do it. Sometimes, sometimes it'll get you ahead in the long run. Some and all the times it won't. But you, know, you can sometimes the freebies are what they are. And that, oh, we see another freebie. Dark ips are free. They'll still punch, but they don't. They don't scare anyone because you can insta kill them with a multi-targeted multi stone and we'll see if that succeeds uh hope as long as food doesn't take a nap and food food did food did a tell a life thing uh yeah well it happens stone does not have a high accuracy but uh, it's usually a pretty good go-to spell for instant kill uh, either way it's it's not it's not too shabby uh foo's Spell power not is also not too shabby, but not great. I mean, it's not like uh, Rydia or Palom level, but it's good enough for what good enough most in most cases where it's efficient enough to you know just try, just gamble. Yep, Sheep Launcher is going to head back out. That is a samurai bow, so we might still be seeing pretty much everything here. But Sheep Launcher is going to head up, take the Star Camp fight, which should be a bit easier on him. Get him through that. We know that no matter what, this Twin Heart is required. We know that this Rat Tail is required. And hey, we know that Tower of Zod is required no matter what, because that Tower, that Earth Crystal has to be somewhere. And 
we only have two chains left and only two key items at end chain. So we're going through all of the rest of the seed. This is a full 100% seed day. Good times, trash seeds. It's good. It's still good to watch. Uh, who doesn't? Who doesn't love the? Who doesn't love trash fires? Uh, this, you know, like it could. You know, there's a there's a at this point 50 50 chance. If it's not behind Rat Tail, it's behind the vanilla twin harp spot. The twin, the twin harp turning in Cape Magnus. I mean, who doesn't love their scoop of vanilla or two? Them, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm interested to see what Douche Move does here. It does look like he's going to drop this off and drop the rat tail in first. Um, I could also see a world in which you decide, all right, I don't need an Adam in armor to go do Twin Heart and Earth Crystal, possibly. So I'm going to wait to turn this in. And we are going to see that he is going to have to double dip his way into this, uh, into this cave at this point. We'll have to come back later after doing the Twin Heart, which we now know leads into the Earth Crystal, which is quite convenient, really. And that'll be the last two real checks he needs to get through before turning in that pink tail and getting through it. Looks like he's going to go forge first. Sheep launcher, I believe, however, unfortunately taking a white to the dark imps, and it looks like he is now going to put that curse ring on the Tella. The foo, but the, they, the foo, yeah. That's all right. It's it's mop up duty. It's late. It's mop up duty. It's fine. And having no, just noticed, uh, the the foo. Did not get any any sort of real health, kind of, and no no curse ring. Uh, that ex that kind of explains the uh, degree of difficulty of not having a proper anchor. As as putting to putting into context the uh, the uh, evil wall fight, uh, you would have had a lot more turns available had Fu been actually properly anchored. I mean, this is as you uh, and when you have an anchor having a proper anchor you your characters also not just have to be, uh not just have to have the anchor being slow but your character is being ideally two and a half times faster agility incre uh, increased agility over the anchor to uh, to allow them to get take allow them to take their turns a bit quicker and um so this now actually fixing the anchor problem should make the um should make the uh fight a little bit easier and proper anchor helps a lot uh starting avenger cecil okay that's that's fine you know we're not so i think we're probably still going to be relying on the foo especially anchored in the middle spot with so with the increased spell accuracy to uh pretty much uh put them put them in a stone ideally um i think one of the if if you don't trust in the accuracy of stone, uh, you can always use something like a uh, toad or size. Those have those have uh, a bit decent better accuracy than um, than um, stone. I think it's like stone is like thirty five. Uh, toad or mini have fifty, and this and accuracy is boosted by the the stat that they the spells are the spells are uh, dependent on. Uh, so it's like fit, so it's like um so it's like that's the stat so for for size it's willpower uh for for toad it's uh wisdom and you divide that value over two that is the bonus that you get from from your stats so when you when you do a say a cursed ring tell uh, you sh the act you he loses practically all all, all his bonus accuracy in foo's case uh, it's not so much. It's about um, seven or eight, eight percent accuracy lost. But the in this, uh, but in uh, sheep's instance, since Fu was anchored in the middle, there is a twenty-five percent uh, bonus for placing, uh, placing them in the middle. And uh, right now, it's pra it's almost time for music. Definitely, we are going to have a little bit before that. So I just want to make a moment to. Uh... Note that if you're new to the randomizer, uh, first of all, welcome. And secondly, you're about to get a treat because one of the things we randomize here is the music that Edward plays on his heart. So sit back and enjoy as we're about to see what that is today. Yep, just let DJ Spoonie be do his thing.
And that is going to be D smooth through that heart check. That is, of course, Mammon from Quest 64 getting the deep cuts today. Uh, Dishmu going to get the Earth Crystal here from this check. We know this is the only place left it can be. Just needs to head up Tower of Zot and then turn in that pink tail. And he will be through this entire seat. I want to take a quick step back and take a note that uh, Dishmu did find Zeus Gauntlet sitting in that Kokel shop. Picked up two of them, one for the edge, one for the Cecil. So he is really, really well set to get through the rest of the seat at this point. And Sheep Launcher did get through that Dark Imp fight, deciding after seeing that Samurai Bow, you know what, I should probably go back and deal with that Asura while I'm here, just in case that ends up being one of the things I'm chasing. And so he's now back on this fight and looking like he's pretty stable and going to be able to get through this relatively easily. Yeah, I think I think there's um, one kind of um, one issue with uh, Sheep's equipment. I think Sheep still has the Assassin Dagger on the edge, and Edge's potential can be hindered if you do not have a, a, a what amounts to be at least a mute knife. At least, although I feel like it's better if you had like a long sword. But uh, when you don't have the if you don't have the ideal weapons. Um, Edge isn't, it, it becomes a little more effective as Kane, and that's not, Edge has has a lot, has a lot, uh, scales a lot better when his weapons are, it, uh, Edge, are, I, I would say, is the most, probably equipment dependent, I mean, I think, well, spoon work just as well, because you still need the spoon, and at least a power shirt, or better, which is the, the, the better being at, <laughs> but, that's um it looks and i think i'm not sure i'm, hope, I'm hoping sheep launcher finishes this battle it's getting really close and that uh yeah that the, i don't there's no reflect there, there's no uh, yeah no needs to take advantage of reflect uh strats on azura uh can't can't let uh, Azura have free healing at any point because that uh, that often resets progress uh, until you hit that uh, 16 16,000 HP threshold of sorts to before uh, cure four stops doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, that's un that's unfortunate. That 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 wipe uh, pro um, looks like I guess probably worth looking turning. Um, Doing the other objectives, like say do giant, or at least turn the other key items. Hope for some, some at least an, uh, hoping for an, uh, at least like a pink tail to get the adamant to make you know some of the some of the battles easier. I mean, you have to consider it. Sometimes the adamant doesn't come early. I, I, no, I don't think b both runners have, haven't done Evelyn Castle to you know just try to to get the gamble on a on a on an adamant armor. We don't need the crystal sword as both both Cecils. For both for both runners are equipped, but the the probably the adamant armor, at least maybe if you were running they're running doing what they're running what they're doing, uh you know feeling would be a lot more comfortable if it was adamant armor as well because then you wouldn't have to worry about a lot of the bosses like evil wall crush crush is not a factor uh, a lot of, and getting and make basically making Cecil or whoever equips the adamant armor practically invincible you know, that that level of that level of comfort and safety that comes with an adamant armor which oh it's some some uh some clever kamikaze because levels don't matter anymore because uh, that's fine that was the that was, you should, and avoiding the uh crumble skip very uh, very popular skip seen in only uh crumble skip spots where the where usually the elements the elements usually use, uh demonstrate the comes to nz Dishmu going to be through that fight now, going to pick up the pink tail from getting through that earth crystal spot, going to get that nice free rest, and then head right back on over to Troya in order to get that final fight underway as soon as he gets that pink tail traded in, which gives him that free adamant armor. And meanwhile, she deciding to head on back. Unfortunately, you know, couldn't quite deal enough damage before that reflect ran out on Ashura, and it just knocked... She just ended up knocking his party over. So gonna go ahead and just go another way around it. Maybe try and get that pink tail, which we know this will lead to. 
So we do know that this is Sheep Launcher's way around this. He's going to get through this spot, he's going to get through the next spot, he's going to get an Adamant Armor, then he can go back to the moon. So th this is the light at the end of the tunnel. It might be, unfortunately, a bit too late because Dishmu is on the sea fight, but again, this is another good example of a runner just running with it and knowing how to think their way around the seed. Yeah, uh, uh, sometimes seeds uh, give you many options, and you st and on Sheep Launcher's case, I still have many options left on the table to complete while uh, while having some tr difficulties in some in other parts like the the Jura fight the evil wall fight you know those and it sometimes like if there are other options on the table it's okay to you know skip just stop what you're doing do something else and then get to a point where you have the you have the proper kind of like the proper power level to you know to survive a seed and Looks like trying to figure out what, what where to put the add on admins on on Cecil. That's a that's almost a gimme. But I think uh, I guess what we'll rely on power overwhelming. We might be time to go ahead and take another listen to this hurt song first, though. That too. Unfortunately, not going to get through much of it because Crystal Sword Cecil, as it turns out, is quite a good character. So through that Odin here. Meanwhile, Dishmu on his way down to the end of the subterrain here, and uh, that means that we are almost at the end of this two-hour-long slog fest of a seed here. Very, very difficult role, and both of our runners have performed very, very well getting through it today. Yeah, this this um, this seed had had its own. Uh weird level of fun because you know the the, the seeds seeds rando rando is rando and sometimes uh not all seeds are made the same but i see these flags uh i mean i i think it's they're trying to tell us uh time to go to bed or something else uh i, I think there's a question that needs to be asked uh you, you want to ask the say, say what question that needs to be answered you know, it's 1 a.m. on the East Coast. It's nice 10.15 here on the West Coast. It's morning time for the uh, Europeans, but uh, you probably still want to sleep in. But that does lead to the important question. We have over 550 different sprites because we cannot move Zeromus around, and that leads to this question here. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And a lot of side butt questions, like, who is butt? Why is butt? How is butt? Does it have more than one butt? Uh, and let's see who see who is on the who's called being cosplayed. Oh, interesting. I don't even know what this is from, but I love it. That is an Angry Birds reference. In case you were not feeling the flashback to like when even was Angry Birds? That was like early, early iPhone era too. I don't even remember when that was. I feel old now. And yeah, this is just good old King Pig from that. Gonna dart the spoon over on Dishmu's side, just gonna get everyone berserked up, I imagine, and just swing through this. Meanwhile, Sheep Launcher is up here at this karate fight, gonna be through this tower pretty quickly here, so we'll be on his way very shortly. Yeah, look, I'm, looks like uh, Fu is the ink decided, was the decided, decided anchor for Dishmu's team makes it, um, not ideal, but, uh, better than probably Cecil doing <laughs> you don't want. And typically, I mean, on, on some, on some turning flag sets, uh, you know, like the anchor, uh, sometimes then, then with vanilla, uh, vanilla, agil yeah. vanilla agility enabled means Cecil's the anchor, and, which means that, uh, you know, have, Cecil has to be on the uh, one of the kind of like recommended levels that Cecil should be in that allows the uh, fight <laughs> to go at least go in a way a more friendly way than than a lot of uh, unanchored seats, which tend to go like pretty fast and t maybe too fast to handle. Like <laughs> so, um, but I think it should be more than enough. You're doing um, Cecil and Kane doing enough DPS. I don't 
and it looks like up oh, it's already rocks rocks phase means it's nearly over less than 12,000 HP on the table and not and Zeon's not too long for this world definitely not and I want to take another quick moment to shout out both of our runners here both have put on a very very good run through a very brutally top at times seat and I don't want to take that away from either of them unfortunately or, well, not unfortunately, that's the incorrect term, but uh, fortunately, Dishmu getting his way through this is going to take this victory here, and I believe we are joined by Dishmu for the interview. GT's on a very well run and a very difficult seed today. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. I do have a Uh, nope. The volume was over on Sheep Launcher's side. We watched Poison Lock, but we did not hear Poison Lock. It's the last time I meme for you guys. <laughs> Please laughing. submit all complaints in writing to Xeno. <laughs> no. Um, first of all, of course, GG's on a very interesting race. Walk me through your thoughts on the seed overall. So, thinking back, this is like the exemplar seed of like what the differences would be between group and brackets. Um, I had the early season, the early crystal sword. Um, I upgraded from a palum to a rosa to a foon. And moving through the back half of the scene with palum and that's just absolutely not going to be a thing in brackets. Definitely. Um... So one thing I want to sort of go back to towards the start of the seed, you know, you got down to the bottom of the Fey March, you saw that uh, Calcabrina and that sparkle down there. Uh, what were your thoughts on that when you got to that point, and especially once you got past that and sort of realized this is one of my only ways forward at this point? So it's always kind of a, a risk, like, should you try and get those out of the way early, or should you wait until you're a little bit more powerful? Um, was really wishing I burned a siren before going down there, and as I was walking down, uh, I was kind of regretting not having down there. Um, I think Alpina is you know, easy enough to take care of in that spot, um, but I didn't have any AOE damage really to speak of, so um, I, I knew I was going to be hacking away at them, and I just wasn't fully confident. I think coming back with like glass hat crystal armor, Cecil and using cover strats for, for, for that was the way to go. Um, I also regretted not checking the sparkle on my first track. I really wish I had. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that D-Winner's fight is free if you get to the breath phase uh, intact, and you're lucky with how uh, the uh, but you have to make it that far, and I wasn't, you know, if even if I had seen it at that point, I might have thought maybe I'll come back a little bit later. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Brad. Yeah, I, I, I saw that, and uh, I was thinking that you may, like, you had the moon, you, you had got, you done the Cal Brenna fight, and you had the Moon Veil, and the Moon Veil would, uh, with the Crystal Sword Cecil, would, would have been enough for the fight, but I don't think you I think that, I, I think the timing of, of having D Lunars, you know, sparkle, you don't know what it is, uh, I think that. I mean, um, you could, I mean, maybe you could have yeah. just probably done safety safe before that, you know, you, you, I'm not, like, I yeah. think maybe that, I don't, I'm, I was thinking, hey, just, you know, just take, take, take a safety save, maybe come, and then do that right after that, but I'm uh, doing one after the other, even though I think the Cal Brenner didn't get you any, net you anything, because, you know, you didn't need it, okay, just do the next thing, and then, then when you had to reset, then do the battle again, you know, the, not having, the moon fail probably you know you can't, probably could have had plans for it right right, right then and there yeah um so that, that's a great point i i think what i realized and, and i did take a few unfortunate wipes which i'm embarrassed about like on both of those fights uh, but, uh, but having taken that first wipe on the dealers fight um because i overestimated cecil's ability to get in two swings before the viruses started flying uh, those mo that Moonbell wouldn't have helped me with like those 1600 damage virus casts. Uh, I was going to go down either way. Um, so I opted for the safer but slower strat on my second try. And I think that that 
you know, again, like I, I, I think that was a good call, and I, I should have just done that from the start. Oh, you don't, you didn't. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, you, you don't never want to, you don't want to smack the, uh, the drag, the D Lunas when you're not ready. I mean, I can, I, I totally understand that. Like, vi virus go even, even virus still go choose through adamant armor. It's uh, the spell power is way too, way above adamant armor's weight. I can see that. Uh, Take me through the uh, uh, the beginning, towards the beginning of the seed. Uh, you had, you, you, I mean, you learned that you got the magma key early. Um, so, uh, would uh, a lot of runners would, you know, try to dive early. Uh, what was the thinking behind that? So, I am a big fan of minimizing your trips to Fabu. Um, so, I always kind of hold out hope for an early pan, so that I can go into Silk Cave once, go into Fabu once, and never go back to either place. Uh, there is a sort of an, an inflection point <laughs> where, where, where you kind of think, okay, well, what are the odds I'm going to get it at, at this rate? And you kind of have to make the decision. So I left Baron in, um, and I left the, the, the Fabu Gongla location to come back to later. And if either one of those was the pen, I knew that I was giving up some time. But, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically the calculus. Like, clear as many checks as you can before you dive Silph Cave, because getting the pen before that saves you a minute and a half walk, plus, you know, and another walk, in, uh, another flight to Fabul and another walk up to Sheila and, and back if it's something you want to keep. Yeah, totally understood. Uh, yeah, I, fading from bull. I, underst I understand that. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, you know what? No one wants to triple dip for bull when if you don't have to. I, I totally get that. So, what, uh, sort of going back up when you got up to the moon, um, you of course went over to Asheron like that. What were your thoughts when you got through that and realized you were going to have to go through the subterrain? Was there any point when you were actually going through that subterrain in which you were like, maybe I should just hop out and try what I have here instead of, say, going to that actual Mirasame altar at the top of the moon? So, if, you know, for, forgive me, uh, I may not be remembering exactly right, but as I recall, I still needed the pink tail and the legend sword. Um, and as I was going through the checks, I, you know, I, I started with the crystal sword, sword altar because it's just a, you know, a, a sort of a, a whim <laughs> that sometimes I'll just do that first. Um, but then I jumped down to the ribbon for the item density. And, you know, as you do those checks and you're like, well, how many checks are left? I need two more key items. Uh, both of which are terminal key items, and I still haven't found Earth Crystal or Twin Arc. Um, and, re uh, sorry, and the Rat Tail. So, it was pretty clear to me that I was not going to get both of the key items on the moon, but, you know, at that point I knew that I was going to get those two of items. So, I wasn't ready to just dip out for any of those, uh, you know, like just knowing what was going to be like. Yeah, I was, in this case, specifically referring to, like, when you had that uh, Twin Harp and Rat Tail in hand, still had the Mirasame altar left at that point. Um, but I definitely know that, you know, you made the right call still going through that, even though it didn't pay off, you know, it did work out for you in the end, and you did a very good job getting through the siege today. Well, thank you. Um, Deathlight, did you have any other questions for Dishmu tonight? Um, not, I um, can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, I mean, the, um, I think the, un, uh, the, uh, uh the, I think you followed the underground checks, like, after you, after doing, um, uh, after do, uh, completing, uh, the, the king spot, uh, of a fame march, and then getting the tower key, allowing you to do, to, uh, head to a tower, um, you, I, I think you had, I think you had a key item leap for uh, once you uh, did most of that. I think you uh, skipped out of um, of whatever uh, of the I think the package at uh, uh, sealed cave, right? I mean, you had you had a, 
I think you had a uh, you had the key item lead, which was actually which was uh, fascinating, considering it didn't it didn't pan out, but it got you the uh, the key item lead, which gave you the double XP, which I think helped you out quite a bit. Yeah, it did. Um, listen, I'm so sorry, but it's late and I've got to run. Uh, thanks so much uh, to everyone, and uh, I will see everyone later. Thank you very much for joining us again, GGs, and have a good night, Dishmu. GGs again, Dishmu. Great, so heading back in, Sheep Launcher, I believe, has just gotten through this Assure check here at Cave Bahamut. Still has those last two objectives to go at this point. Still needs to get through that evil wall down at the bottom of the moon in order to get to that rat tail, which leads to that legend sword. Yeah, it's, um... There are not many checks left, and you know that. Well, and as we know, the viewers that they're not—they aren't the last. They are not the terminal key. I mean, you'll still have to leap down to other other things to do. So, yeah, it's it's def, um, the the extra die for sheep launcher to finish up what was not well, what left unfinished uh, is unfortunate. But you know, it's you know sometimes you sometimes you have to be um, sometimes. Uh, can be dedicated to finishing what you started, and in, in Sheep Launcher's case, this is, uh, I guess that was the path decided. Uh, and, and of course, the rat tail being required, effectively required, uh, is, um, yeah, this, it's, um, not, I mean, not, it, this is still a good seed. I mean, I'm, I'm still impressed with the overall, uh, Overall route, or, uh, early routing, especially um, going, um, dip, d early dipping through, uh, through uh, the underground with having the mammoth key because uh, Sheep Launcher had a real, uh, like, strength advantage overall uh, in the early game. Yeah, definitely, you know, and it's just one of those times where the cards don't play out for you, you know, I think if you give a different seed to these two runners, you have a potentially very different outcome, and that just really speaks to the closeness of our uh, team so far that we have going on. You know, we got 99 people in this tournament, and I've been saying ever since there's 99 different people, I would not have been surprised to see in brackets. I do believe that this might mean that Cheap Launcher, unfortunately, won't make it to that bracket stage but has put in a very, very good performance here tonight, even though there were some rough moments here and there, as just tends to happen at this point in time. Um, unfortunately, it is late, and we do have quite a bit of Sheep Launcher Seed left to go, so I believe we are going to send you over there to watch the rest of it. Um, I want to give you all a quick summary of what is going to be coming up. Uh, tomorrow in terms of our match schedule at 3 p.m. here on the free enterprise channel that is going to be starman versus flurry 14 make sure you're here for that we got a little bit of a special surprise plan for you with that today uh, tomorrow as well so look forward to it at 7 30 p.m. we have judge joe who was our tracker tonight uh, against Kedril, also here on Free Enterprise. At 8 p.m., we have tonight's restreamer, Xenocat, against Saradin over on RPG Limit Break. And on Free Enterprise 2, at 9.30 p.m., we have Dr. Cossack versus Scythe Marshall. And again, I want to give a thank you to both of our restreamer and tracker, as well as my co-commentator tonight, Deathlike. Uh, Deathlike, it's been a wonderful time commentating with you as well. Uh, I think now it's time to say our quick goodbyes here. Yeah, that was uh, a lot of fun to see. Uh... I hope you see every everyone in this seed. Please, uh, the next seed. Uh, please do not spoil. I mean, this is still a race going on, so you can't. You're not allowed to spoil, or spoil this or any other race. Let let the uh, racers watch other streams as needed. There are plenty of other races to watch tomorrow, not just the ones uh, that are going to be restreamed. So, um, yeah, uh, had a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, have a have a good night. Have a good day.